All right, let's get going. Mr. Mark Beastie, Killer Kriegsman, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Oh, OBS, when will you learn? Oh, oh, good. Apparently not today. Now, excellent. All right, so where were we last week? Uh, what were we building? We had another Modelo on deck. I don't think we're, oh, we were um, working on trying to get stuff together for that ComSat contract, and I think I actually have a solution. And good night. Thanks for hanging out, Mark. Good to see you, as always. <laughs> get good sleep. But we all, uh, I don't know, take it for granted. I made a big mistake this week. I bought I bought Starfield on Friday, and I have not gotten much sleep this week. <laughs> I have not, I have not well rested. All right, uh, comms test one, I believe was, yeah, this has the generic thruster, and I think I got this one up to altitude without too much issue. And I actually built a lunar impactor that flies on this same rocket that will work. We just have to unlock the tech. Uh, the fellow mistake maker. <laughs> Pride myself on all of my lovely mistakes. So I have test flown this uh, a couple of times. And we were actually able to get Comsberger um, to a successful orbit. It took a little finagling. Uh, and some work, and our Delta V readout, still super not correct. So, you took a few days off last week to play 70 hours over a weekend. Congratulations. That is an accomplishment. Uh, man, I wish I had that kind of time. I'm all out of vacation days, like, for the rest of the year. So, like, I'm, I'm pretty screwed. And I guess that was my original plan, was to just pick it up for over, like, Christmas or whatever. <laughs> and so that I could use a vacation day or so to... To do that and I I did not I I watched too many people talking about it on YouTube and I was like dude I need this and watching N9 play it on his stream too like man I really want this game and Friday just became unbearable so I just went ahead and did it nearly finished painting 20 cavalry and under a hundred uh, and under a hundred infantry to go nice man that's awesome <laughs> congratulations I saw the pictures you posted uh, what was that last week Two weeks ago? No, it had to have been last week. And man, they look great. Like, <laughs> you were fantastic at your craft, sir. Um, yeah, I want to test fly this, make sure I've loaded the correct one. So we're going to run a quick sim. And if our sim works out, we'll start upgrading our launch pad uh, to suit this thing. And hopefully that will be done by the time we actually unlock the engine <laughs> that we're using on it. I think we have some tooling to purchase. Not a hundred percent. So there's that. But oh, I was actually back to Starfield for just a second. I was pleasantly surprised it actually runs on my crappy 1060. It doesn't look great, um, but it looks better than like I don't know most other things. Oh, let's pull up the contract here. Because, uh, yeah, it's Molina. We're not trying for that one. Yeah, ComSat 125. We've got that periapsis above. Uh, no. So we want to target our air ap apogee. Derp 2639 kilometer. Target periapsis at 200. Attach at 200. We can just do our current inclination because I do not believe we have an inclination requirement on this. We do not. Fantastic, and engage autopilot. Let's jump out of map view and um, press go. I forgot about that part. But yeah, so my computer actually runs Starfield, and that makes me really happy. I was like, well, I'll download it, I'll load it up, adjust the graphic settings. It started me off like it defaulted to low. I was like, oh, low. But I was able to kick a few things into the medium category. <laughs> so that uh, that worked out pretty well, but yeah, it's playable. It looks looks good enough to keep me happy. So, um, yeah, and I don't know. <laughs> now that I'm about to start my week, I probably won't have time to touch it again until like Friday night. So I'm just trying to mentally prepare myself for that kind of withdrawal. 
Preparing your Warlord Titan after putting it to one side for two years. He's going to need bigger shelves. Well, there's worse problems to have. But nice. Alright, let's jump this into physics warp. Let me kick the volume of my headphones up a little bit. Can y'all still hear me okay? I know I had to adjust the audio levels last time. It looks like the rocket is actually quieter than normal, but still there. So, okay. Um, and yes, I just pulled down a bunch of updates from CCAN, so... I'm actually kind of wondering if this Delta V thing is maybe going to get resolved. I don't think it is, but meh. We'll see, we'll see. So, how's everyone else's weekend been? Or week, really? Yeah, it's been a week. Hope everyone's doing alright. Every day above ground, right? Okay, yeah. Um... I did adjust booster pitch rate on this, or did I adjust it and then set it back? I know our QA limit is still 1400, our pitch rate is still at 0 0.65. And yeah, we're not flying too far under the prograde. But let's see how much pitch down we get here. And oh, the somersault. Really? Yeah, I think I had that resolved on our. Okay, really? And you're. Is there a stop at stage? Yeah, there's a stop at stage. Let's. Hmm. Come on. Are you going to figure this out or not? Thank you. Get back on track here, buddy boy. Nice somersault. <laughs> thank you, thank you. The ballet returns. Back to playing Starfield occasionally, free afternoons. Lucky, you kind of need to wait for an update to continue proper. Ran into a companion quest bug. Uh-oh. Well, it wouldn't be Bethesda if everything worked well. How did I resolve the summer? Oh, yeah, we were playing with uh, ascent rate and stuff. I mean, we're kind of running out of margin, but maybe? I don't know. Of course, I don't know if our Delta V reporting is still out of whack. Also, hello, Simav. Good to see you. I just pulled the updates down right before I got started today, so everything is on most recent. I, I don't know if you're happy to hear that or if you're like, you dumb motherfucker, <laughs> stop doing that, Cosmo. There's a reason you swore off updating stuff for 1.1.3. It's because it always breaks something eventually. Oh, hey, our, now it looks like we're we're digging into our previous spacecraft. Simhav of the stream, what is thy wisdom? <laughs> ah, that's, you know what? I should really start the simulation over. I guess we'll see how close we get to our target even with me screwing everything up. We'll see how well any of this goes for us. Oh yeah, we do have the bump of the uh, separator that we can fall back on also. Oh man. Needs a two foot space minimum. Wow, that is a, that's a big boy. <laughs> Right, there's our orbital change, and yeah, B bummer. Yeah, it's going to chew up way too much of this delta V. Way, way, it's going to leave us with 329, so that somersault really bit us in the butt. Um, let's see if we can adjust our ascent angle. We should start building it, and then I should start figuring. <laughs> like, we got it to work once last time, right? Am I remembering that somewhat correctly? Towards the end of the stream, we were actually able to get Comms Burger into his uh, burger orbit. Okay, let's adjust this down to 5.5. Five. Um, attach altitude should be just fine. Man, what did I do on the lunar impactor test build differently? I don't think I did anything differently, to be real honest. I just think that maybe the rocket wasn't pitching at all during staging or it was holding attitude <sighs> I don't know let's give it a shot engage autopilot kick it we don't have our stop at stage now so hopefully it'll separate things cleanly <laughs> Winnebago <laughs> Winnebago of Warhammer 
You mean one of Bango? <laughs> Isn't there an O in country? Nope. Just a little gentle physics warp. One, I, mm, the spinning. I don't know what to do about the spinning. I say maybe if I kick down the thrust limiter on our set motors, so they're not given such a decidedly awful a thump. And also, maybe if I rotate the RDO 105 to 45 degrees, so that it's not relying on a single give, gimbal pivot point to uh, compensate for that spin. Do we have some clipping happening up here? Yeah, on just one side, though. Creative. Very interesting. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. All right. I was really hoping we could just knock out these comms contracts today. Yes. Much, much better. I'll take it. And we're still working with the existing margin, although that much deviation from prograde. I expect to see a lot of that get chewed up. Oh, that's a good question. I don't think they still use horses in Warhammer 40k. I could be very mistaken. Okay. So it looks like hopefully it's just the adjustment to our booster pitch rate that did it. It could also have been that we're in two times time warp that solidified that for us. Ah. RCS in the wrong stage. Who cares? They're not armed, so it doesn't matter. Ooh. It is horses. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Alright, Comsburger. Hmm. So, 400 meters per second left in the tanks. Presumably. I wonder how much higher we could kick up that uh, insertion apogee, which would take some of the load off of our hypergolic stage up here, for which the Delta V reporting is. Uh, inaccurate. Or at least it was. I don't know. Maybe it's been fixed in an update. I don't know. Simav, was it fixed in this update? 20 on your desk right now. 50 in your collection. Wow. Horses would be extinct. They kept them just for military service. Uh, it sounds warhammery. Creek did. All right, there is flame out. We're at two six three eight four three. Does that? Well, it has to be our. Yeah, we know what's going on. RCS to arm, stage it, uh, create nodes to circularize at apogee, create node five hundred forty two point six meters per second. Allegedly, we have that in spades, but we'll see how well this goes. All right, execute next node. Where's the damn claws? Forty <laughs> k is metal. Correct. Uh, you have mainline mech jab, which gets updates like twice a year. Okay, good. So no. <laughs> is there a? I don't know. Is there a dev branch mech jab I should be using instead, or does anybody else have this problem, or is this unique to me? Well, 
one of those things where, you know, if Cosmo, then F up all the, all the things. <laughs> this, like, I've been searching around to, like, see if anybody, anybody else has been like, hey, man, my reported Delta V and my actual obtainable Delta V are two wildly different numbers. What the hell? And like, nah, couldn't, couldn't find much. Couldn't find anything, really. And you know, it doesn't even happen to all of my spacecraft. So I'm like, it has to be some part or something or, I don't know, floating point decimal error. Normal. A certified cosmoment. <laughs> All right, 55 minutes. Our battery's going to hold out that long. Let's look at the not correct screen for that. Uh, yeah, they should. We should be okay. And of course, solar panels will not be aligned to the sun. If we have to spit this thing out without getting any alignment, that's going to be not fun. Boonk. All right, started at 540 and 788 on this side. Jeez Louise, let's physics warp through it because I don't want to stare at it for six minutes just to watch it fail. And hopefully we'll have enough fuel to orient panels towards the sun. Oh man, is that, de that decoupler is going to really F shit up though? Well, now do we have, I'm not looking at the correct contract here. We do not have an eccentricity requirement, just a periapsis requirement. So if we wait half of uh, an orbit and then orient to the sun, we should be firing along our uh, prograde vector and thus not screwing up our anything. We're in the same branch of MechJub that came with it in the express install for an entire run, flew manual for all early stuff, late R7s and Proton. Flew in PPG just fine. Yeah. It's uh it's failing the if Cosmo check. <laughs> Simav likes to put in all these things to mess with just me personally. So like they know when it's me playing and they makes bad stuff happen because it's me. Oh, are we coming up on... Wow, we actually do have excess Delta V, or at least it looks like it. Sinav is the inside man. <laughs> he is the inside man. Yeah. Oh, wow. We had 110 meters per second when this showed 60. Now we have 40 something meters per second as we finish off this burn. Oh, are you kidding me? Our periapsis is at 61. Ah, where are we in this orbit? Let's take a look. See, Nike. So, uh, looks like if we let's kill rotation here. If we tap this, no. We need to be on the other side of the orbit. Let's come out here to Apogee. Fine. Add maneuver. I should have verified these things before we got started. 22 meters per second. We won't have that. Is decoupler still strong? Decoupler is mighty strong. Yes. Yes. Uh, let me kick this off. We're going to give this a little bit of rotation. Very, very, very little of rotation because our batteries are about to ex uh, expire on something. We just need to put these panels in the sun somewhat. There we go. That looks like a pretty good angle. Kill rotation. Off. Give it a spin cycle. How much fuel do we have left? Next to nothing. Free 30 meters per second. Yeah, somewhat. We just got to use it at the appropriate time and at the appropriate orientation. Uh, but we still have this big chonker attached, and it is going to drain out all of the battery. All right. Uh, nope. I have. 
because I tipped the wrong way. <laughs> I did not plan this out very well. And goodbye, batteries. Where are we now? Um, did I? Yeah, I flew right past my node. Good, good job, bro, Skeff. Uh, someone calculated the ISP of decouplers to be like 50 seconds. <laughs> you should do more of the pictures next week and finish up the last 30. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I, I zoomed right past it. But I think we could just go ahead and build this. So let's revert to the V8B. I think if I actually start thinking about it and plan stuff and do it carefully, we can we can make this work. All right, so we're still waiting on things to uh, unlock. We'll hit upgrade to modify our launch complex. Kind of only 17 per Oh, wait, hold on. No, 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 no. No, 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 I'm at the wrong pad here. LC Orbiter 1, that's where we want to be. Yes, commonality, 96%. We're basically just adding uh, a bunch of HTP to this. Decoupler ISP math sounds like a real IPG thing. <laughs> Next moon lander will be with decouplers. <laughs> All decouplers. Crude moon landing. Landing only on decouplers. All right. Uh, how long will it take to do this? Three three days. Sure. Uh, renovate. Please wait for any reconditioning, rollout, rollback, or recovery to complete. Fine. Jeez Louise. Okay. We'll do that then. Uh, reconditioning, yeah, that's right, because I, I finished out that Modelo flight that netted, uh, you know, next to nothing, so <laughs> there's that. Okay, that's done. Let's go ahead and upgrade TDS's Aero Beehive. Can't be letting that be the most ridiculous moon lander. <laughs> Say, uh, didn't Carnassa do uh, crude lunar landing with nothing but F1s? I don't know if that made it to an episode or if that was just a live stream, but um, I, I think that's going to be top tier ridiculousness. All right, comms test one, upgrade, renovate. All engineers have been unassigned. They will be reassigned if available when renovation is complete. Fantastic. Ah, uh, yes. And also, the other thing I did this week while I was not, had not yet purchased Starfield, was make some edits to the twos, or the JZ2, hopefully, so we can knock out that Carmen line contract. He did that live, entire Saturn to the moon. And not just the, uh, now, what I'm thinking was not like just taking the entire Saturn V. It was doing the lunar landing using only F1 engines. So like his his little lunar lander had an F1 engine. I mean, he had to edit things so that they didn't require ground um, clamps. All right. So uh, yes, yeah, small changes to the, the JZ2. Basically, we've removed uh, engines five and six. We've tucked these up a little bit. We have snuggled the engine nacelles north a little bit. Um, that is pretty much it. We just scooched some things around and, uh, yeah, made small adjustments. So we'll hit save edits. We'll assign some engineers because we gotta. So staff, let's pull them off. Let's pull 100 back, go to the hangar, slap them on here. There you go. And then work to complete on this one. How long until our research is done? Early flight control, June 4th. We're at March, so we got like two months to wait until we can even start building this. Miss the streams, your RP1 is still borked. Oh man, sorry to hear that, Tyrannosaurus. Bummer. 
Okay. Um, what was I doing? Hiring staff, main, namely researchers. Uh, let's hire 10, 12, 13, there we go. Let's scooch this research along integration. I don't think we're building anything here, but we can. Oh, yeah, yeah. All the LC1 engineers get reassigned automatically now. Excellent. Live notifications are popping off. Wait, what? <laughs> are they like going out like crazy? Is the stream bouncing in and out? That's not, that's not cool. Oh, hey, our, uh, we can, yeah, that took next to no time. So can we prep you for air launch before we do that? Training. Uh, Mission X-15, let's get both of these in on it. Get them trained up so that we can get them on a flight and we will prep you for air launch, warp to complete. Ding, mission training, warp to complete. That gives us a good chunk of money. Let's, yep, staff, let's go hire a few more researchers while we're at it. Uh, 10. 20, we can just hire nine more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. At least we're in like a roundish number now. What's our per day? Seven, some, 700 something. Good enough for me. Um, I guess let's just go and do it. Let me take a quick save. Save game, save. Check our contract, make sure it's still active. X planes, Carmen line. Reach 100 kilometers, land safely. Sure, why not? Here we are. Do you like the new RP-1 or the old one? I like both. I can't get it to work. So great. Well, I mean, I guess that predisposes you to liking the old one. I am really enjoying launch complexes and, and programs. I think this is a, I think it's a pretty solid addition. I am a fan. Air launch. Yeah, we'll start 250 kilometers out. We're basically going to go straight up. More or less. So let's try that. Uh, Herbert James. Yep. Because you're the good one. Fill tanks and launch. All right, fingers crossed. This is, I think, our third attempt to clear 100 kilometers. You're supposed to say you like RP0 instead. <laughs> uh, take me back to the grand old days before tooling was a thing. <laughs> All right, scent guidance, you can go away. Maneuver planner, you can go away. Smart ASS, you can go away. Uh, no, let me just track the short stats. Gear up, fly by wire, peg the throttle, and light them. Okay, yeah, yeah. Until we burn off a little bit of this fuel, it's going to push our nose down. So maybe we just roll the throttle until we can get some control going here. Next, make a Kerbal Centrifuge. <laughs> How's it going, Viper? Good to see you, buddy. Mm, that is a weird firing pattern. Yeah, that's what happens when you use the lazy method of mounting engines. All right, let's... We got it. Nope. Still pushing the nose down. Basically, the, the more of this fuel we burn off the more central our uh, center of mass to center of thrust will be. Yeah, losing speed. Speed is not the point here, though. Is our experiments running? Crew report, telemetry, and high altitude flight. We'll get that one back soon. Ooh, since when did the XLR11 throttling actually have the correct animation? Uh, it's been a version or two, at least. Shutting down one nozzle at a time. Yep. I'll say I... It was like that in my last playthrough, too. And that was on... I think that one... Eh, did that one start on 112? I guess it did. Because that was my first venture into launch complexes and probes. One before that. 1.10. I'm pretty sure it was there also. Not 100%. Could be very, very, very wrong. But maybe? Alright. We're down to about a third fuel. Are you still pushing the nose down, buddy? Pretty soon we're going to be going too high for 
air services to work, and I need you to be pointing in a completely different direction. So, how about... Whoa, whoa. What are you doing? I want you to tail stand, and I don't want any apologies. Oh, great. I made it behave so well at uh, next to no fuel that it behaves so poorly when there's actually fuel in the tank. <laughs> Dude. All right, RCS to arm. Are you kidding me? You're barely 20 kilometers. What kind of weird trajectory are you flying there? Not the one I want to be flying, that's for sure. I would like to pull the hell up. Aircraft does not wish to cooperate with me. That tank's empty. That tank... Eight, why are you unbalanced? With, oh, it's because we got the RCS. So, of course, it's pulling from that HTP. That one should have been last. These are all kind of... No, they're not in line. So I think I need to reset the fuel balancing. And so maybe we right click. Oh, we can't transfer fuel around, can we? Oh, we can. Let's try this and see if we can't get some of this swing back in our step, or is that going to make it worse? Should be making it better. Well, no, because it's so far forward of the center of mass, it's basically acting like a hammer or not a hammer. It is making it harder to pivot. There we go. Fun fact. Your RP-1 was not Borg. You could not go to space or make an X-plane, even with designs that worked in old versions. I'm going back to making a three-foot long ship out of card paper. In, in Vigil panels? It has a full interior. That sounds pretty awesome. Alright. Let's get some pitch on this boat. Go, go, go. You need to go up. I'm tired of spending my energy going straight, which is nice and all, but you have one purpose, and that is to climb. To climb and climb and climb. Finally, we're getting some leverage here. Okay. Pivot! Pivot! In? In? No. Nope. We're done transferring in. We're also done with... Yep. I don't think... I don't think we're getting there today, folks. This is gonna take some other... Uh, well, we'll get some high-altitude flight data. At least we got that going for us. I am just laying back on the everything. Oh, RCS. Let's try that too. I forgot I turned that off. And flame out. Good job. Okay. It is what it is. Uh, what did we get to? 54 kilometers? Great. All right. Uh, I think we'll collect some data here. Make sure this is running. Yep, we're running. 18 more minutes of this. Let's collect some data. Let's get back on the ground. Let's reassess the uh, fuel flow prioritization. Pork the Kerbal. I will not. Herbert James is the best dang pilot we have. And the only one that's not dead or drunk. Well, we don't know about the other one yet. She has worked well so far. I believe there's a speed requirement for high altitude flight, something like 600 some odd meters per second. So I, I just wanted to check to see if we're, we've dropped below it or not. Um, man, the temptation to like, oh, hey, crew report running now too. That's neat. We can maintain four minutes of that. Cool. 600 meters, 650 meters per second for all the high stuff. Got it. <laughs> That's about your space. Yeah. All right. you know, That's what happens when you run most of your things off of ethanol 75. It's tasty and uh, high proof. I mean, not a bad arc we got. Let's fizz warp it for a bit and just kind of... Hmm. Oh, crew report. Biome specific, probably, because that is about to ding off and I'll crew report dinged off also. All right. Brakes, brakes, brakes. 
I don't need fizz warps. I hope not. Uh, we are really, really, really moving fast, though. Oh, buddy, we are... Yeah, how much stress? Kind of an airframe stress, if you could just stress the airframe's stress. Maybe you should have flight tested this a few times, too. High and fast, it should say. <laughs> Don't put vodka in your aerobies. <laughs> Sometimes you, you just have to do what you have to do. Whatever gets the program off the ground. Surrendered to torque and just created stick with wings, Mark 1. Uh, yep. I know how it goes. Alright, brakes off. We need to maintain some of this speed and make sure we can get back to our runway over here. Let's get ourselves set up for that if we can. Hopefully before we bleed off too much energy. Looking pretty good. 16 kilometers. Looks like we got a pretty decent amount of headway. So, man, yeah, maybe we just reattach the lower two engines and cut them off when things start to pivot badly. Well, as well, if that doesn't, yeah, getting ahead of myself. Let's see how adjusting the fuel flow priority works for us. It was a stick with wings that had drop tanks. So that's something going for it. Hey, you know, <laughs> uh, you, I might bork this Kerbal. It is very much a possibility you are correct. And someone makes RP1 ROSS mod. Makes the cities not flat. Graphics cards catch fire. That's what happens. Uh, I should have just set up for this runway. But it's so much shorter, I don't know if I can actually do that. I doubt my skills to land on the factory runway anymore. I've been spoiled by the shuttle runway for so long. Alright. Snap wings to level is definitely not a thing that I should have been using. Yeah, we got plenty of speed. We're in pretty good shape here. At least to make it to where the runway is. Not that we'll be very successful landing upon it, but <laughs> there, an attempt will be made. You smell fire when you're playing ours. <laughs> Parallax on a 2080. <laughs> hey, I've got a 1060. <laughs> I do all right. All right, flare the brakes. Oh man, I forgot about rebalancing this with the brakes out. Oh, that might be problematic when we actually try to put rubber to tarmac. Uh, let's get lined up for it first, which means we need to yeah, let's start our turn in. Oh, I should have started it a little while ago. All right, here we go. Looking not great, but okay. Brakes. Turn. Brakes off. That looks uh, not great again. All right, brakes some more. Keep your nose out of it, friend. gear. Breaks off. All right, nice and steady, buddy boy. You can do this. <sighs> deep breaths, deep breaths, deep breaths. Ground coming up quickly. Skirt, skirt. A little, little faster than I'd like. Breaks, breaks, breaks. Sixteen gigs of RAM, half of it being used on watching the news. Kerbal kind release for the twentieth time. <laughs> I 
we're all in that boat. Recover, uh, recover to space plane hangar. Okay. We know it still flies, um, not particularly well. Break speed warning. <laughs> woot, woot. Adjust approach. Too fast. Woot, woot. Too fast. Okay. Yep. Great. And we got 0.6 data, which puts us in the, what, 5.6-ish? Do we have? No, I already got... Yeah, I already started researching the solid node I wanted. I think our next, that's our next investment is Digicom. Probably. Um, how's our research coming? 529. Sweet. We moved it up a week. Oh, yeah. All right. There's our recovery. Let's go uh, make some adjustments here. And hopefully we can get this done before uh, the training for our other pilot expires. When is Mood getting punched, though? Uh, everything goes well, hopefully before the end of the stream. <clears throat> I have a uh, prototype that worked somewhat. All right. So I think the core of this is we want to get the fuel out of the bottom of this stuff first. So that is minus 8, that's minus 15, that's minus 20. Uh, let me see the overlay. Um, nothing changes when I do any of this. <laughs> uh, show common, COL, there's center of mass, there's center of lift. We should probably fill the dang tanks. That one, that one, derp, 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 derp. Good, good. Oof, a true launder. <laughs> don't don't judge me. Landart is good. Landart is stable. If uh, everything else fails, you will always just fall cleanly to earth, nose first, as God intended. Yes, yes. It'd be funny to make Kerbal Center for you and have someone else. <laughs> There's a torque button on the toolbar that will show you dry COFs. Yeah. Um, not translation, engines. So like, yeah, this is our initial, and if we switch to the dry center of mass, it's much, much smaller, but still nose down, but hopefully enough for um, enough for RCS to compensate for it, but I don't remember it being quite that much before. So let me nudge, well, I nudged that one down and it's gone, which means I should probably leave the other one alone, but Need them to be even, so... Oh, man, really? 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 Okay, there we go. <laughs> ah. Moves forward. It's a free wing tweak right there. Move those damn wings forward. I mean, this is, uh, this is where we're full. Really? You don't think that's uh, acceptable? I think the whole assembly moves as one. It does. You happy now? Our center of mass moves with it. <laughs> just a little, just a nudgy nudge. Uh, we can probably move, now nah, we don't want to move those back. We don't want to adjust anything back. Monkey's paw. <laughs> I had two more engine. Uh, you know, the original version did have six, but it was way too hard to balance. So what's our, yeah, we got Lots of angriness here at uh, full center of mass. Uh, pushing down, which means we need more mass up high to compensate. So these tanks should drain first. 
And so higher priority means set to zero, set to zero. Higher priority means they go first, right? So, and I want that this tank, no, this tank to go second. So we set to zero and then give it a plus. Am I thinking about this correctly? Add jet. I can't add jet. It makes it so I can't complete the contract if I put a jet engine on it. I would like this tank, which is mostly in line with the engines, to be absolute last. Your priority is already set to negative 10. We'll take that. Oh, wait, no. Let's... Okay, so it's going to flow forward. Man, I don't want the RCS to be included in this. I really don't. Um, let me adjust your priority to be dead ass last. Dang it, that's why things were looking balanced, is because I forgot about that dumb tank. Alright, dry COM. No, dry COM still looks pretty good. Of course, it would because that's with everything empty and it doesn't matter. On planes is silly. Is it though? <laughs> yeah, I, it is. All right. Um, I guess I'm just gonna hit save edits. We'll give it a. It's not gonna take off with the thrust pushing it down. Uh, maybe in the. We're just gonna give it a shot. We're gonna see what happens. Make it to space shuttle. It would not survive reentry. <laughs> Never. Doesn't stand a chance. I wish. I wish. I wish. It'd be great. To take one. One space flame. So yeah, space plane frame, and just take it all the way to shuttles. All right, that'll take 16 hours, and then you're done. Let's get you prepped for air launch. Oh, hey, our other Modelo is done. That's interesting. How's our research coming? 529, I knew that already, so we got about a month left. Let's go ahead and uh, fly this little guy one last time, just to check. Air launch, yeah, sounds good. Mandy Kruger, fill tanks and launch. Let's do this, please. Mercury heat shields on it, but I don't have those yet. All I have is the what, beryllium heat sinks. They don't work all that well, it turns out. All right, gear up. Oh, crap. My B key broke. Now just the key cap came off. Uh, P, fly-by-wire is engaged. Uh, throttle just a bit and light them. Can you pull up? Come on, Mandy. Lay back on the stick. Nope, it's pushing the nose down still. So use kerbals for it. Just wrap the whole thing in kerbals. We'll keel hull people. All right, so that one's going. That one is, those two should have been, now that one's gonna drain first, then these guys, then that. So come on, get the nose up. You have to climb. Climb, climb, climb. And pushing the nose down, it's arrow doing that. What do you mean pushing the nose down, it's arrow? Oh, it's the, the thrust being across the top. Is when the center or the the torque offset of thrust when the fuel tanks are full pushes the nose down. It took me a while to translate WDYM to what do you mean? <laughs> Alright, yeah, see as as we throttle up, we get more nose down. So we're just gonna roll the throttle back a bit. Let's make sure oh, no, waiting is good. Engine torque doesn't matter in dense atmo. I mean, it, well, yeah, I guess you're right. I was say, like, I'm holding the stick back, right? We're at 17 kilometers. If I spike this throttle, that nose wiggles down a bit. How are we looking on? 
fuel consumption and why yeah all right rcs to arm i guess the air's thin enough now to where torque is more than atmo pressure roll the throttle back again yeah and i should probably just try to level out and go straight until we're at a spot where we've got better authority for this without picking up too much altitude. We want to keep enough air around the wings. So that means, yeah, that's not draining. Why are you draining, friend? Uh, fuel priority. Uh, shift does not do what I want it to. Alright, there. That should help our cause a little bit. Throttle you dummy. More time. More drag losses. Alright. Looks like we've got some kind of authority here. Yeah, I was, I was trying to balance the throttle to like a place where it wasn't going to start torquing us down, but now it looks like we've got pretty good authority, building up pretty good speed. And the nose is coming up. Come on, Kruger, fly this difficult piece of shit to space. You can do it. You can do Carnassa. <laughs> mm, nope, we're, we're not getting anywhere near. Looks like we'll top off at about 60, maybe 70 kilometers again. Because he nuked Matt alone. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. There's throttle at yeah, 76 kilometers. I believe that is still not the record. But hey, we're going to get some data. Ah, crew report. Oh, once we're over grass, that'll pick up again, probably. Uh, yeah, 77 kilometers. Not bad, not bad. You know what you have to do? Make a stick with wings? Stretch the plane for more fuel, add more wing area. That's, I might as well just build a new aircraft at that point. But yeah, probably not wrong. commit gimbal XLR. Yeah, we could go to the single ignition gimbaled XLR 11. If I don't know if we have that one unlocked yet, to be real honest. Ampersand! Missile with space frog in. <laughs> Only slightly cursed using a theoretical upper stage as an X-plane engine. Only slightly. And, you know, I've done X-planes with uh, uh, AJ-10s, so... <laughs> Then really early on the tree, does it? Well, you'll be shocked to know that I am not very high in the tree at all. <laughs> Can we pull this nose up and maybe get a little more time at above 40? And nope. No, nope. turning off the brakes was not what I meant to do. All right, let's not get cocky with it now. Let's turn around while we still can. Yeah, buddy, you need to you need to bleed some speed. <laughs> Maybe change headings. Use redstone as a plane. Let's just yeah, air launch a ballistic missile. Ooh, that is some G loading. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Snap the brakes off. All right. Yeah, maintain some of that. Man, Mandy Kruger is one tough cookie. Sustained 9G maneuver like it was nothing. You see XLR 99 had some purpose. It needs to be an extended X planes program so you can do NASA and just keep flying them past orbit and ground launch ballistic missile with wings. Why well, need the wings at that point? Just have the have the cockpit eject and detach, or have the cockpit detach and land under its own parachute. Time 90% of players get to the 99. They have crew in orbit on Mercury. Fair. I mean, and, you know, accurate. 100%. That is 
most of the case, yes. All right. Good attempt, Mandy. You made it uh, three quarters of the way there. But, uh, yeah, you're flying on a pretty substantial pile of shit at this point, so still great fun for his 10%. <laughs> the lucky 10. Sure, the Soviets will love it. <laughs> they just strap men to top of missile. 10% based LARPers. <laughs> we all wish that we were them, explaining our way to the stars. Yeah, we're a bit high for my liking, but historical accuracy over speed. Fair enough. All right, let's get set up for our turn in. We're going to be high and fast, alarmingly. Who knew? We can probably stretch this approach out for a little bit longer. Perhaps, perhaps. There we go. Let's turn in sharply. Yeah, test that airframe. Totally worth it. Flare, unflare, unflare. Okay, here we go, final approach. All right, so fuel flow priority didn't fix it. Uh, I'm thinking we'll add the other two engines on the bottom, balance it out at a normal fuel load, and then shut those two down when the torque starts to overwhelm us. But at least that means we can start our tail stand sooner and start putting more of this fuel into altitude as opposed to just levelish flight. So I think that's our that's our next step. It's worth a detour in the tech tree. Hmm. I'll say, and on, um, I love flying. I mean, shuttles and X-planes. I love them. I love building them. Flying them often is uh, well worth it to me. Nimmin, how's it going? Good to see you. Difficulty high for a first playthrough. Dude, you're crazy, Zuko. <laughs> Alright, gear out. Breaks down. 135 meters per second. Oh, man. I may have bled, bled, uh, may have bled off too much speed. What if I uploaded what again? I don't understand the question. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I may have made a critical speed error. I just want to make sure I get over the pavement before I make too many adjustments here. All right. Don't stall. Don't stall. Don't stall. Don't stall. Nice and gentle. Easy does it. Scoot. Bounce, bounce. Breaks, breaks, breaks. Okay. It's still way too fast. Yeah, definitely. I thought I was... I was worried about stalling out. Uh, why don't I upload again on YouTube? Um, time, mostly. Um, I don't have time to like edit videos to anything anymore, and I guess I hadn't for like the last year that I was still uploading stuff. I was taking stream footage. I was you know, fast-forwarding through most of it and doing a voiceover and then leaving some of the moments live, which is really just kind of like not the things I wanted to make for YouTube, but it was all I had time to do. But with a side of bounce. Mm -hmm. And like, honestly, I, I don't know, with, with the job I have now and with kiddos schedule and like normal family things, I have, I don't even have time to do that anymore. <laughs> and so I'm super happy that I can still like make time to play on Twitch. I don't have time to edit anything down. So I guess my option is to just upload the raw footage to Twitch, which I can do. I have actually been archiving uh, all the streams for this playthrough. I just haven't had time to like write a description, <laughs> which sounds super lame. 
All right. Uh, oh, hey, our next uh, TU-25 will be done, but we're not going to fly it because it needs uh, changes desperately in order to fulfill the contract it was built for. Um, we'll go ahead and hit duplicate. God, how much is that going to cost, though? Not much. Ten grand. Keep our engineers working. Uh, staff, let's max out our researchers. Now, if we can, we can. We can hire another 40 for 12 grand. That kind of caps out our cash. Sweet. Um, there is our JZ2 Prime getting ready to go. If you just control C, control V, your streams to YouTube. That's pretty. I, I have been uh, archiving them or like exporting them from Twitch to YouTube. They're just set to private and they don't have descriptions and they're all out of order. So. Yeah, I'll say, an idle engineer is a very unhappy engineer. Uh, what was I doing? Fixing my stupid airplane. Again. So stupid. Hmm. Hmm. Gimbal. What if the bottom engines could gimbal? Do they run on the same fuel mixture or fuel ratio? I guess it's the mm, clicked out of the click the wrong one. That were dumb. Idle engineer is also a general safety hazard. <laughs> uh, indeed, sir. Indeed. Now let's lock to ninety, and then tuck them up as best we can. Ploop. Uh, all right, go to engine. Ah, we, dang it, spent all the money. <laughs> Modified XLR 11, used on RTVA2, blah, 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 blah. Higher performance, single use, includes gimbal assembly. Does it still use the same ethanol locks HTP mix is my question. Modular engine idea is great. Not sure I'd get in this aircraft, but it's clever. <laughs> All right, let's top off the tanks and see what kind of... I wonder if that gimbal is going to be enough. And honestly, now that I've reset all the fuel flow priority, how much of that is going to come bite us in the buttocks? Yeah, it looks like at, at full tank, we ha we're pretty neutral. If an engine falls off during flight, they claim it was meant to. Modular, after all. Yes, modularity. Why didn't, who put fuel back in you, buddy? Okay, so we do have a little bit of torque, but it's nose up. Uh, dry calm uh, with gimbals. Rotation, yaw. Pitch. Ah, at DCOM, our pitch is still nose over at full. If we turn the nose off, it's nose up. So with, all right, this is our dry COM. Uh, minute 30 burn time, what the fuck? You're saying we need more? So, I mean, we'll, oh, I'll put more on it, that's for sure. I actually have a tank that I have not yet max. Oh, we are incorrect. It is not a minute 30 of burn time. Dink. It's a minute 36 of burn time. <laughs> yeah, we can up open this up to 95% without making you too mad. That gives us another, <laughs> another seven seconds. Hey, I can clip some more fuel tanks into wherever I want, right? Okay. I'll real quick check here. Dry center of mass. We're showing a nose up pattern. That we expect. If we pitch this gimbal uh, full pitch up, lots of rotation, full pitch down, we can still inch the nose down. So even under most engines, and it sure is a lot of engines. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of nozzles. I've seen cheaper high performance launch vehicles. <laughs> 
It is, yeah, it could be cheaper. You know, have to put a crew on it. And it sounds like Simav wants us to add drop tanks for effect. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to try this thing, although I think he's right. Maybe we should put some more fuel in it. Let's get it up to a minute 40. Yeah. <laughs> You'll obligate the second the vote for drop tanks. <laughs> Ampers. These don't have fuel in them, do they? No, they do not. Uh, you know what? We're going to leave it that way. All right. Uh, save. Save edits. Oh, yep. Got to pay the entry cost. What? Just... Oh, I guess I hit the button and it says OK, pays the entry cost, and takes me out of the VAB. There's <laughs> U-235 in it. <laughs> it's 1960. We are thoroughly under the blanket of uh, the MAD doctrine. <laughs> My little civilian agency is not going to be responsible for starting the next world war. Training, looks like we'll have to re-up Herbert here and get him ready. Warp to come stop warp. Prep for air launch. Warp to complete. Hey, is our tech done yet? No, that's not until June. Or no, 28th, 29th, whatever. Mounting to carrier. Here we go. Multiple assured drop tanks. <laughs> All right, one more again, air launch. Yep, looking good. Uh, Herbert James, grab your parachute, fill tanks and launch. Let's do it. Now, as long as our gimbling engine doesn't fail, it should go pretty well, right? <laughs> All right, gear, fly-by-wire. Waiting, 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 good. Throttle to full, ignition. Wow, wow. All right, let's level that. Whoa, wow, so much authority. So the drop tanks are good. I love drop tanks. All right. Since we have all of this gimbling fantasticness, let's... Whew, man. <laughs> that thing is touchy. <laughs> all right, James. Captain Herbert James. If there ever was a chance to put a Kerbal in space today... This is it. Man. Wow. Jack Yule, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, raiders. How is everyone today? Good timing. I'm going to space. <laughs> the last bastion of capitalism. <laughs> How's it going? How is your game? Are we playing Kerbal? Yeah, 72, 75. It looks like we're clearing our last flight by a good amount. If we hit 88, there's the record. All right, come on, Carmen line. 97, 99, 100. More lifties than thrusties. <laughs> how's, it, how's it going, Bullet? Hey, uh, oh. Oh man, we're gonna go to actual space. There it is. There's the ceiling. 140, 150. Shutting down. Oh, our gimbally engine doesn't relight. Oops. <laughs> Pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, sounds sounds familiar. Actual space. A triumph of thrust over aerodynamics. The machines have won again. Trying to orbit. First orbit. Uh, are you in uh, RSS or stock or heavily modded somewhere in between? Man, 
Oh, buddy. Yeah, we're going to space today. There's Cape Canaveral. Good. That's all I was trying to see. You can turn on RCS and do some flips that will certainly kill you. Yeah, we'll just, we're will just we going to work on getting the nose angled back down when we... Uh, high altitude flight still running. Crew report, not so much. How's our contract looking? Uh, Carmen line, yay! Reach 100 kilometers of the crewed vessel. Ding! <laughs> yeah, we're going to get a couple of milestones. Uh, Herbert James, first Kerbal into actual space. Probably, yeah, 156 kilometers up. Dude, mm, well played. Uh, RP1 RS SRO? Oh, awesome! The internet 100% needs more RS SRO. I'm always excited when I meet someone else playing RP1 RS SRO. I love it. Hey, actual space! My guy, how, how does it feel way up there? Please don't run out of oxygen. We did not test for this contingency. RP1 is an epic game on it, on its own. It is. It is indeed. All right, let's fold out the air brakes and hope to God that they're <laughs> nasty, too large, and heavy rocket. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we're going too slow to be... Well, crew report's still running. We got another four minutes of that. <laughs> Oh, are we, how, how much of Cape Canaveral are we going to overshoot? Okay, coming back down. Let's get the nose into the game here. RCS to arm. It's every time in your games. <laughs> He's a good 50s engineer. Mm -hmm. Just do the risky backflip in space. I don't blame you. It is Excite, Certified Space Program Classic Experience, <laughs> overshooting all of Florida. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we should probably Immelman under and try to pull out, uh, heading back uh, eastward again. Oh, overdid it with the RCS. We do still have some engine puffs left, 5.4 seconds worth. So if we have to, we can maybe correct a little for some of this. Ah, good, getting more crew report data, high altitude flight data. Certainly not going to clear any of those out this time. It's good that all Cosmos designs fly as well as gliders. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> I feel like you're taking a shot there, SimHav. Standard re-entry. This is 100% as intended. Everything is fine. This is fine. Not... Wow, man, we're going fast. Herbert is uh, very happy. Next 15 moments, overshooting the landing site, creating side booms over populated areas. Yeah. <laughs> good to know, good to know. All right, 50 kilometers. Let's uh, maybe nose out of it just a bit. Oh, man. we. This is going to hurt how fast that we are moving. <laughs> okay, good. We started to bleed off speed, so here comes... The stress. Come on, baby. Don't break up on me. Don't you pass out. 10 G's sustained load. 17 kilometers. Oh, good. We're already down to 1,200 meters per second. RCS to disarm. Let's keep the ballast. Let's return some of this energy into altitude. Oh, beautiful, sweet peas. Absolutely gorgeous. God, love it, love it. All right, quickly before you run out of energy. Using AA, yes, indeed. My name is Cosmo, and I like to pretend I'm a pilot. Welcome, Cosmo. No, atmospheric autopilot, yes, absolutely. <laughs> we would all have died a long time ago without it. It is a miracle for idiots like me <laughs> who make designs as dumb as this one. Okay, uh, 15 clicks up. Gonna maintain a little bit of speed. Let's see if we can get our bearings on our shuttle runway. Although I don't know. Oh god, you idiot. Fold in the air brakes, stupid. Yeah, crude space plane in orbit is realistic option RP1. And things like the tech tree heat shield options make it too impractical. It can be a realistic option. I um, 
I think it was two saves ago. Um, I made a space plane for doing general orbital stuff. It was deployed from a slipper. Oh, as first orbital vehicle. Mm, yeah, I mean, it might be just a little too costly and heavy to get off the ground. Whoa, okay, don't do things in... I thought I hit the button, sorry. Don't do uh, attitude changes in, in Fizz Warp. That is like rule number seven. Be not. Rockets, okay. Planes, forget it. Fair enough. Say, so I'm I am bad at both. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I just like building things in this game. I'll spend, you know, three weeks plotting out a design and, like, making it look pretty and all of these other things. And then, of course, it doesn't work, so I have to change everything all the dang time. <laughs> all right, happy glider. Man, wow, we actually kept enough speed to make it. We might actually be high and fast again. Oops. All right, we're going to get set up for the shuttle runway here. Ah, thank you for the follow, Jakul. All right, let's pop it out of Fizz Warp. Mm, I don't know. I do worry about coming in too hot. I always land too fast, chat says. Only one Kerbal has died this save from my terrible landings. I think a lot of the early... Uh, proposals involved a plane on top of a rocket before they realized it was easier to cut the plane part out. Yeah, I was thinking, there was a lot of questions on, like, well, how do we get them safely back on the ground? And I'm like, oh, we'll land it like an airplane, duh. I don't know. I have a lot of questions about, like, will the parachutes melt? <laughs> how do you keep that from happening? PLC has a hidden space plane program for orbit coming soon. Wait, what? Simev, please verify. All right, I need to actually fly this dumb thing for a few minutes, y'all. Someone volunteers to make it. Ah, uh, of course there's a catch. There's always a catch. Done space plane only stuff for first crewed orbit. Man, that is some serious dedication. I'm also curious as to what year they did that. Like, when did they get to orbit in those saves doing space plane only stuff? And for a long time, gluing an X-15 cockpit onto a heat shield for first crewed orbit was mechanically optimal. Hmm. Interesting. Oh god. <laughs> I think in my in my one one three save on YouTube, my first crude orbit was uh, my first actual orbit was Jeb in a Bell X1 cockpit with a heat shield on it. <laughs> he died. Alright, breaks out. Let's bleed off some of this speed. We got a solid approach here. We're just hella fast, yo. Alright, and gear out. Breaks in. Very concerned about stall. <laughs> Jankiest of shuttles, but dang, it didn't re enter nicely. Anything cool happened when we were gone? We went to space. I don't know. I don't know when you left. How long you been out? Where are we now? Alright. Nice and gentle. Blare them. Cut them. Easy, easy, easy. Easy, easy, easy. Plenty of runway, plenty of runway, plenty of runway. 120, scoot, still too fast. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Brakes, brakes, brakes. <sighs> Mission successful. Holy crap, we went to space. <laughs> Astronautics, American manned spacecraft. Study 1958, North American's proposal for the Air Force initial manned program. Recover vessel, recover to space plane hangar. X-15B was a stripped X-15A with empty mass of 4,500 kilograms. It used a three-stage Navajo-derived launch vehicle to achieve a single orbit with an apogee of 120, a perigee of 75. And it does seem like a really bad idea. <laughs> ah, we're in real space! Quick save, dummy. Dang it! Yes, 100%. I 
We will do that right away, Bullet. Ah, uh, we came back from space. And no one died! <laughs> Alarmingly. Hey, we got a, we're got we up to 11 science. We can start reaching, doing Digicom. Yay! No XP gain. Went to space. No one cares. <laughs> All right. Uh, Digicom. Let's add you to the stack there. Hey, does that complete our program? Or do we have to do it twice? Yeah, contract complete, uncrewed speed records. Yeah, those are uncrewed altitude record of 100, 120, 150. X planes, Carmen line. Hey, 25 applicants. Sweet. Program complete. Awesome. Now we can take another program and get a bunch more funding. Quick saving. Per the rules. There we go. Use Alt F4 to have a 100% successful launch every single time. That Herbert just says 177 days. Take it or leave it. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, let's check our X planes research. Hey, I mean, God, what's our funding at now? We're going to get 58,000 left on that. And then, yeah, I don't know what the next year's funding is because it goes from this axis of number to this axis of number. I think we'll just, we'll trade it in and maybe we'll trade it in for the crude orbit. Man, that is, oof. Hmm, it's less. <laughs> UI broken. UI needs uh, padding numbers maybe, or XY axis descriptors, either or. Reach orbital speed, orbital test flight, orbital crude flight, and complete orbital science. If we do that, we don't have, even have a vessel. We don't even have capsules researched for this yet, so nominal year is void. Fire Venna von Braun from applicants. <laughs> I, nine? Two eighty two, three forty two, four seventy two, and then it tapers off. I can't tell. That's the final year, so it looks like it should top the arc a little bit and then plummet. Maybe. I don't know, like year one, year two, year three, year four will top that a little bit and then taper off. We got four years, I think we can pull it off. So let's turn this one in, collect our reward. Go to crude orbit. You gotta go to bed now. No problem. Thank you for the raid. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for the follow. Hopefully we'll see you again uh, sometime. It's late in Germany. Uh, work tomorrow. Yeah, it sucks. Thank you. Is Tony Stark on the list? Uh, he he really ought to be. Don't you agree? Man, I really just don't want to do that one. But uncrewed. All right, which one of these are we gonna finish off first? Definitely not that one. Targeted satellites, probably not. Netcom. This one we're going to try to finish out this stream. So when we're done with that, then we can take uh, uncrewed lunar surface. I think for now we'll take crude. Oh, I can't because I don't have enough slots. I have slots taken three. How many slots do I have open? Two. I can't take that. I only have one slot available. I have to upgrade my facilities again. That was dumb. I just threw away some money for nothing. Okay, yeah, program slots four. I have four filled. I have max six. So this one only takes two. Why can't I accept it then? Not um, not quite right. You take two. I can't take you. Crude orbit takes three. Definitely can't do that. Oh, I just threw money away. I just threw away money. And now I have to... Uh, uh, early flight control. Now we're waiting on that. So, fine. Mistakes were made. Indeed, indeed. Early flight control. And then we go to unlock the engine we need. Now, uh, let's, just, let's just do it from the VAB. We got some tooling. Quick save dummy, yeah, fine. And 
And then we fly comms burgers. Open. Bank lender comes back and says, you can reload, it's only money. Mm. Is it though? Is it though? Okay, go to the surface if you have not been in orbit. <laughs> An early lunar being done. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Okay. Uh, I, I completed a program that still had a year of funding left on it. And I am unable to take a new program to replace it. So basically, like, I ended a program. They're still going to give me money. Now they're not because I completed it. And I can't put another pl program that's going to give me money in its place. So I, I basically just pooped away some money. All right. How much is our tool? All oh, it shouldn't be all that much. Eh, only 20 grand. Yeah. Fairings, fairings, an avionics unit. And a bunch of structural parts. <laughs> Structure all the way down. Now there's a balloon tank in there somewhere. All right. Uh, tool all. Uh, purchase all toolings. That's what we need to do. Cha-da. It's fine. You started 500k extra. Exactly. <laughs> Call it a veto. Return to the good timeline. I don't think it's going to tank us that much. Like, once we clear this program, which hopefully we can do in four launches... Go back in time when you still had it. Ah, I see what you did. Now we're going to play by the rules today because I started with 500,000 funds. You know, mistakes were made. Is that the engine I used? I don't know. Let's just let's hit save and add it to the build list. That'll tell us. Unlock four parts for three grand. Oh. An integrate vessel spending 17,875 of unlock credit. It. Ah, the RDO 188 cannot be built because I don't have. I do have 24 grand. There it is. All right, yeah, because I I upgraded the core engine. So there we go. Um, show hide management. Are you on the build list? Yep. Comms test one is being built. Sweet. Uh, no, I don't want to hit that. Show hide management. Awesome. You should have a mandatory alt F4 for 10,000 points. I, that, that kills the stream. <laughs> no, it doesn't kill the stream. It kills Kerbal. That, that mandates a loading screen. Uh, staging. Stupid. Boom, boom. Ba -ba boom, boom, boom. Da -ba -da -da. Save. And let's throw another one on the build list, because why not? Here we are. Uh, nope. Can't. Can't afford it. All right, um, I don't think we're going to do our Modelo photo. Definitely not a Corona project. We could roll it out and launch it just to have something to do, but uh, these don't take that long to build, about a month. That gives us oogles and boogles of cash flow. But real quick, we've got some engineers from the hangar that need to be unassigned. Orbiter 1 is full. Uh, our 350 ton could take the bonus, even though they're not really doing much right now. I do need to make some updates to that vehicle. But that's probably not going to be a today thing. Today, hopefully, um, comms test, uh, duplicate, even though your staging is dumb, and I should have fixed that thing or that part first. Don't you have a 100k reward for end stream? <laughs> do I? I don't think I do, honestly. For trolls that watch a lot. <laughs> I don't think I... I honestly, I don't... I really don't think I do. That, that just seems... Let's see. Oh, wait. We have 25 applicants we have to assign. Uh, we also have a bunch of money we need to spend. 140, and that takes us from 6 to 8. It'll be done on 60, January 14th, 1961. 14 January, 61. So it takes six months. We're currently only making 500 a day. And honestly, we might need to bankroll some of this money for some of the larger rollouts. So maybe we just hang on to those. So we're also going to have to upgrade that again very soon. Which, Speaking of which, let me bump Digicom to the top of the list here. Um, dang it, I need both of these extra quick to do 
the next thing, but I also need Digicom. But they have to be built and the pad has to be upgraded. So let's do it this way. All right, bro. Hold on. Hey, you didn't quick save. It was a mandatory quick save. I want to refund. All right, mandatory. Boom. Done. We good? Can't revert now. All right, uh, integration. Let's roll out comms one and let's get our comm stuff underway. Ding. Duplicate, and I believe the contract I accepted was for four satellites. We got to do at least four launches of this dumb thing, <laughs> and do them carefully. All right, Comsburger, time to shine. One million point smite a Kerbal. Man. I might just be too much of a softy for my Kerbals to do that. Alright, Ascent Guidance, please. It looks like our previous values are all still here. Stop at stage zero. We need to adjust our fairing deploy there. Taking a quick save. Okay, let's do some commsats, shall we? And there's our vessel info, vessel mass sixty four point five four four, um, long stats sixty three point seven eight eight. I am assuming that's clamps, but let's keep an eye on these numbers and see how well they don't match. <laughs> Engage autopilot and ignition. First flight of a freshly updated BP-4W, now with the, uh, oh yeah, this is our first flight of the RDO 105, isn't it? Uh-oh. <laughs> 1K no reloads button. Had to be a whole lot more than that. No using revert or quick save for the stream for a thousand? Yeah, we're, that might be the million pointer. I say, well, I've taken plenty of quick saves this stream. I have yet to load any of them. We've not backtracked at all today. Everything's going quite well. <laughs> Let's wait for this RDO 105 to fail, and I will eat those words. <laughs> Crash into your VAP 50k. <laughs> Uh, that might cripple everything. Get that for free when Crash holds W for a fraction of a second too long and rips his wings off. <laughs> I have been known to pull the arms off. You know, <laughs> pull the wings off space planes sometimes. Okay, yeah, good. I, I forgot if I... I didn't even check booster pitch rate, but it is 0 0.55, which is our... Successful no dancing test of this vehicle. Oh, we already saw the astronaut death newspaper. It was on a, a test pilot who borked his landing, and I didn't know how to eject. <laughs> Reset the save for $500. I'll not be bought. I would originally said, but I changed it to a variety of skill issue. <laughs> Damn, real skill issue here. Mm -hmm. All right, coming up on stage set, let's. Uh, we're pretty close to prograde. Hopefully, not pitching too terribly hard. No, nope, now it's pitching pretty much. We got 14 seconds to figure it the hell out, booster. Please no cartwheels. Please no cartwheels. Please no cartwheels. 
Upload again for K. <laughs> I mean, that would pay for a babysitter. <gasps> yes! Straight as an arrow. And the RDO 105 lit. That is awesome. We're, we're doing well. I mean, yeah, it's nosing down because it's overshooting our Apogee, but that's fine. I don't care. Fairings clearing away. Arceus, maybe? Good looking sub, too. Thank you, Nimmin. The only interesting thing I could manage with these ridiculous wide ass gimbals. Now right, we gotta save the RCS fuel. We're gonna need every gram of it. 30 seconds into the burn. It explodes. Don't inject some reality into my relaxation game. <laughs> Let's get Maneuver Planner ready. And still set to circularize at Apogee. Good enough. RDO 105. First true upper stage. Now, I think your CPU is burning. Uh, you know, distinct possibility there. <laughs> the poor old girl. She's been stressed. So my dear old uh, i7-7700K <laughs> did not sign up for this long of a life. Blessed 0105, stacking on top of each other, and it can do anything. It's all just 105s, all or 0105s, all the way down. That's That's what holds up the flat earth. Space bees. <laughs> All right, looks like we're coming into this with plenty of margin on the 0105, which means uh, we did not get our uh, periapsis set high enough. So we'll take an evaluation of that after we get to orbit and maybe um, set target peri uh, from 200. I don't know, maybe we can get it into a 250. I'll take some of the take some of the strain off of um, the hypergall, the uh, HTP upper stage that we've got going on here. Melania, two 105s, geostationary. You guessed it, three 0105s. Million dollars going to. F <laughs> if somebody pays me a million dollars, yeah, I will. I will take a leave of absence from my day job, and I will uh, go wreck shop on For All Kerbal Kind. And by that, I mean I will completely destroy the upload quality and the, the timeline. Not that I'll do well or make good things. <laughs> that 105 is such a pain to cluster. <laughs> my god, I know, these wide-ass gimbals. Just big hips. It's called the 105, because that's actually the ideal number of them to place on a vehicle. 105. <laughs> Separate engine and vernier parts for it are coming down the dev pipeline, though. Oh, awesome! Yes. Oh, so many wonderful things could be done with a gimballess 0105. Someone get TD Channel to do it. What, to, to give me a million dollars? <laughs> We're to go wreck shop on uh, on FAK. Yeah, and mine's <laughs> true. <laughs> One o five stands. Stand tall. Be strong. All right. Yeah, four hundred meters per second. Yeah, give or take. It keeps dropping now because we're we're off our prograde vector. But looks like we're pr coming in pretty well to our insertion orbit here. And there's our camera change. Whoop. Just got to make sure we push that uh, Apogee all the way up to its required location. Yeah, we'll just uh, not comp set one. 
X oh, we do have an eccentricity requirement. Oh, no. Hmm. Periaps is not above 263. Oh, yeah, it's because we haven't circularized yet, you dummy. Okay, uh, let's RCS to arm, stage it. Let's pull ourselves clear here and give ourselves a little bit of buffer room. Eccentricity, requirements, fun. Mm -hmm. Only that kind of kills all the issues. Add a few more veneers, boom! No more issues with low ignition 0105. Makes it even more godlike. I mean, they still have one ignition. I would assume the veneer thrusters would have one ignition also. But, oh man, that would be just super duper amazing. All right, create node, 543 meters per second. Let's all pay attention. We have 793 meters per second, in theory, in the tank. Although this says our start mass is 0 0.548, and this records our current vessel mass at 0 0.555. So, what has happened to the extra 0 0.08-ish, 7? ton of mass. Where did that come from? Launch tower into orbit. <laughs> I think you already messed with Carnassus up. Rut row. All right, we're just going to let this guy spin for a little bit here until we get to our circularization point. Eh, 20 some odd minutes out. Should we just go ahead and angle in? Yeah, probably. Uh, execute next node, please. This is this discrepancy irritates the shit out of me, and I don't know why it's like that. I also know separating this on this decoupler is going to be a big pain in the dick, and it's going to completely it may completely mess up our eccentricity. How did I breeze past that? It has to be below 0 0.004. That is not a whole lot of discrepancy in there. And I wonder if that 30 meter per second kick in the ass from that decoupler is really going to screw shit up. All right, there's engine light, 540 meters per second and counting. Again, watch those mass numbers deviate. What did we decide the deviation was? 0 0.07? Or 0 0.007. I'd be interested to see what it is when we're almost out of fuel. Right, note, insert the next comms burger at like 300 peri. Got it. Move from 200 to 300. Note made. Thank you, Nova. Wake up just to see a 70 kilometer tall rocket and Christmas tree on top. I would assume it's going to Pluto. Jolt the decoupler facing a normal directory. Mm. Oh, oh, you mean fire this decoupler while facing at a normal attitude, like normal the direction, not normal, as in not. Yeah. I think I understand what you're trying to say. Let me make a note. Uh, fire to normal slash anti-normal. Go. On the hand, improved historically accurate 105 veneers don't have gimbal. Hmm. They instead have differential throttle and extra roll nozzles. Interesting. Yeah, if I were to normal to keep eccentricity. Here's hoping. <gasps> hey, we made it. We have 37 meters per second left in the tanks. Uh, vessel mass is 0 0.296, vessel mass 0 0.290, so the discrepancy is about the same. It is, It appears to be linear, give or take. That is interesting. Our, yep. Uh, periapsis is still not above 2638. Uh, we're just a little too low. We're going to have to touch it up. Uh, ha, ha, ha. You bastard. And of course, we need to make it 
another hour and 41 minutes. What is our current endurance? Don't know. Let's just pull out the resource panel and hope. Yes, yes, yes. We know. Let's just swing. Oh, come on, bro. I don't care about that thing. All right, let's get around to Apogee. Right about there. Retrograde is closer, so we'll aim into that. Oh, hey, I put Smart ASS away. Good for me. Um, send guidance kind of in my way. There it is. Smart ASS, move to retrograde, please. You don't need to rush it that much, bud. It's a-okay. Just float on through. We just have to make a couple of quick taps. Get our periapsis up just a, just a little nudge. One of the first stages more power than the Sun Bomba. <laughs> Essentially just being a pump-fed Carolox RCS. Interesting. Um, oh, really? I can't even hit the N key? You fucker. Uh, uh. All right, fine. I'll switch it off. Oh, I can't make any. I can't make any inputs at all. Static and axle, and they're pointy quite far inwards too. Reminds me of the one one nine vernier system. Static and axle like RCS. Yeah, yeah, no connection. For a ComSat, that's probably not great, you know? <laughs> and we we know we don't actually have 34. I should just get to prograde and fire that stupid fucking decoupler. Although that will, I don't know, we will be facing directly into the sun. The solar panels won't have enough to do what they need to do. Um, yeah, we're just past where we needed to be anyway. So let's speed this up. We got three more of these to launch. <laughs> you can stop kill rotation and force roll 180. It can cheese a spin stabilization. Interesting. Really? Alright, and three, two, one, lock it in. There we go. I saw the doohickeys change on the thing with the stuff. So let's... Yeah, man, I'm absolutely terrified to fire this decoupler, but let's see what uh, normal looks like. And see if we can fire that without screwing up our inclination by too much. I would like to do it. I would have liked to have done it when we had a connection so that I can use spin stabilization to keep the panels rotating. How much fuel do we have? Uh, 1.68, I don't know, liters, grams. I don't know what exactly that's a measure of, just number. 1.68 of number. Press force roll, as Beastie said. Gotcha. And then when it's in the middle of force roll, just punch it. Is that the plan here? Yeah, all right. Should I change that to 180? Or is that good enough? Oh, don't waste the fuel. Dang it. Not a great angle on those panels, but it's what we got to do. So, quick saving. And three, two, one, katunk. Oh, I must have dialed it down. I am quite dumb. There we go. <laughs> Comsat 1 has been deployed. Yay! You did change it. The good ending. <laughs> Any amount of spin is enough. 
We can only hope. Let's check on our batteries, since now that we know we don't have to do that. Hey, batteries are uh, not draining. Looking good. Comsat 1. All right, all right. Uh, no, that's procedural. It's tank, where's my avionics unit? It's up here. Um, part? No. Command. Rename vessel. You are no longer a test, friend. You're the real deal. Boom. Ta-da! I rate this the S plus tier. <laughs> A plus. Huge success. I'm happy with it. Next time you end up with some uh, extra RCS to move around, advance sun left, right. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully we'll have uh, a little bit left. <laughs> Glad you approved, Beastie. All right, and uh, back to the space center. Yay, ComSat 1 in position. No longer a test, friend. <laughs> Soviet Union, whatever spacecraft actually makes it through. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Skibbity bee wop doo wop. Wrong song. Skibbity bop. Sorry, I think the contract checks connectivity. I don't even know if our ground stations are... Well, we can... We can fix that. <laughs> as soon as our... Uh, whatchamahoozits... As soon as our tech research is done, uh, that'll be done real soon. Reconditioning. Get you done. Cool integration. Now we're not, we have to build it. So we got some time to kill. Uh, I should be spending this time upgrading the 350 tonner, but. Don't know. Don't know about that. <laughs> uh, basic solids. That's going to be useful. We're going to need that for our moon puncher. All right. Uh, ch -ch -ch. So that one might be a dud. Is staff green because you've got unassigned folk? I believe so, yes. You can actually kind of need digicoms to do the contract since earlier comms simply won't stay in touch with those altitudes. Indeed. I'm hoping that the gain is sufficient once we have digicoms up and upgraded that we can complete the contract then. We'll just go revisit them. I don't think this one does, but it sounds very scopus. All right, and we'll, I guess we'll just go ahead and let that finish out. Do, 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 do. Mm, pictures and pinholes, batteries are almost empty. Yep, probably. Poor feller. Ding, all right, we gotta keep our engineers happy, so we'll, I guess make another one to, uh... <laughs> we should be launching those or something, I guess. We could pull the engineers off that launch pad and assign them to, I don't know, nothing. Uh, research. Nope. I want to keep this pad open because that's where we're working. How's our research going? That will be done August 1, 1960. Digicom will be done October 4, 1960. So probably by the time we get our third or fourth vehicle off the ground, Digicoms will be done being built. Go ahead and duplicate that. Do, 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 do. Here we go. All right. They wouldn't put an early program in a de decade before you get Digicoms to take. It just requires that there are four of them if they survive the full testing period. What does survive mean then? Yeah, rollout. We take a pretty good hit on rollouts. Yeah, I hope you're right too, Beastie. I guess we'll, I don't know. we'll find out. I don't think I saw anything about maintaining a connection. It did say test, so I think they all have to be alive, as in not dead batteries. That's kind of what I built for, was not dead batteries, so I, I don't know. Uh, 
at least four launches worth of power and then two days or something. Quick save dummy. I'm pressing S5, F5, it's not working. Probably would have helped if it was more closely aligned with the sun. Yeah, I think, well, we're going to try to put this one at a target periapsis of 300 kilometers and see if that doesn't uh, buy us a little excess fuel on our insertion stage because we've got some uh, excess uh, in the 0105 stage that we can capitalize on hopefully a little better. It was at a pretty oblique angle. You're right. I just I thought it was going to get punted by the decoupler. So we were erring on the side of caution. Hopefully with this one we won't have to make such accommodations. Now the panel should have the, the capacity to keep the satellite running. It's like, like they're specced well above the uh, uh, persistent level. I mean, there's there's no like science on the on the spacecraft at all. So really, it just whatever it takes to run the avionics and comms. It doesn't run comms because it doesn't actually do anything. You know what I'm saying? But. I think one panel uh, was spec to be able to run the whole thing uh, at persistent plus a margin, and I don't remember what the margin was. It sounds like more effort than it's worth. You're not wrong. <laughs> you remember at one point I figured out exactly the time of day to launch so that your spin-stabilized narwhal satellites had optimal solar exposure. Man, wow. That, I would say that's putting in the work, <laughs> for real. It sounds like more effort, more, more effort than it's worth. You're not wrong. I mean, did it work though? <laughs> That's the question. Did it work? If it's dumb and it works, it's not all that dumb. All right, we'll pop it out of physics warp for staging. Uh, now that we've made an adjustment to our targets, I really wonder if we're going to get some cartwheels. That would be devastating. Worked pretty well, too, just after dawn. Interesting. Hmm. No, oh, yeah, I guess that would make sense. I would put the panels... Uh, by the time you're doing orbital insertion, the sun should be kind of above you, so side-mounted panels would work pretty well, right? Japanese, can you go for it, please. The sweet embrace of death. Yes, no cartwheels. Yes. Should be fewer cartwheels with higher insert altitude. Thank goodness. I was I was wondering. I'm going to go ahead and stage the fairings off a little early and hope that that can give us bonus delta V. <laughs> I'll say, yeah, man, that's... Uh, I think maybe we'll try to figure out just after dawn, because what's this angle, 80 something maybe? No, 91%, not bad. I'll take it. And by the time you made it orbit, you've gone far enough around the planet that the sun is high in the sky. Nice, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, second 0105 flight has resulted in a successful ignition. Use an F1 as a moon lander. I'll leave that to Carnassa. It's far more insane than I ever will attempt to be. My Formula One. Ah, use a Formula One car as a moon lander. Hmm. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. We're not going to do that. Nope. Nope. We're just going to have to wait it out, y'all. Sorry. <laughs> I tried. I tried real hard. All right, ComSat 2. You do you, boo-boo. Yeah, that Molina orbit thing's gonna really hurt if we can't get that figured out sometime soon. ComSat 1 new, yeah, we just, it's all the same. If Frey one of those things is light enough, it would suck down as a platform. It wouldn't suck too much as a platform to glue things to, yep. <laughs> Millennia isn't too bad. It's not. I just the vehicle I have built for it, my big 350 tonner, 
is suffering from the same problem that we're seeing here, and that the uh, the delta v described is not, or the start mass described is not what the start mass actually is, and yeah, so the margins are just getting torn up on that thing. Just launch the right inclination and then send your apogee way up above one of the hemispheres. Right. It was getting the apogee up high enough was the problem. We just we just didn't have the delta V to do it. And I think mainly it's because I have an XLR11 on that stage, which we should probably swap out for an 0105. I think there's upgrades to the launcher in general that just need to happen, so... What if I added a stop streaming for today button? Well, today that means I get to play Skyrim for 90 minutes before I have to go back to being a responsible, somewhat adult-like human. Vote to give Cosmo a break. Oh, Cosmo's going to take a break here in, in, a, in about, I don't know, after we get this thing set up to do its next maneuver, I'm going to go uh, hit the head. Space Skyrim at that, indeed. <laughs> Say it. As soon as I'm able to hit the... Uh, execute next node on this maneuver planner thing for uh, our circularization thing. I'm going to go uh, take a piss, refill my water, and then I'll, uh, I'll come back. So, uh, you know, I'm going to get a break. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. Honestly, streaming is my break. <laughs> I only get to do this a couple hours a week. It's usually the only game time I get in a week. And I genuinely enjoy it. No man, Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, you know, accurate. Hey, how did we end up with better margins on this than the previous one? That can't all just be because I ejected the fairing sooner. I mean, really? That's very interesting. Less cosine losses from trying to get the low parry. Ah, so what if you had a hundred dollar give Cosmo a day off button? Man, you have to pay me a lot more than a hundred bucks not to stream. <laughs> you have no idea how much I look forward to doing this every week. Yeah, oh, I dropped down to three hundred twenty-one. Uh, which means maybe we can push that launch perigee up just a little higher. Yeah, vessel mass 1.104, start mass 1.097. Infuriating, $1,000, give Cosmo a week off button. You know, <laughs> I would very much consider it. All right, and we hit create node to circularize, create node, 516 meters per second. Yeah, that saved us some money. You have a sticker board with Lady Crash, don't you? Complete chores, be allowed to stream. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Look, man, if I do a really good job, I get a gold one that sparkles, and it's a star. You have no idea how ultra rare those are. All right, execute next node, please. Bum -bum, there we go. And uh, I'm gonna go visit the, the restroom. I will be right back.
All right, I have returned. <laughs> Ever been sent fan mail? <laughs> no. I'm just the dude on the internet. Sent me an entire air conditioning unit once. A, a kingly gift indeed. Uh, and <laughs> so I lied. Beastie did send me an air conditioning unit once. This is true. 100%. Absolutely factual. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this we can physics warp through. Because uh, this has been auto strutted. What the fuck? <laughs> Fair. Oh, I forgot to check the. Yeah, you know, the, the deviation was 0. Point, or, yeah, 0. 0.006 on the last one. I'm assuming it's going to be the same here. It really ought to be. And hopefully we'll have enough fuel left over to orient correctly. Oh, that God, that deviation is just chewing through delta V. I do not like it. Oofta. All right, come on, comms burger two. Yeah, it looks like uh, we'll have. It looks like we'll we'll have it. As long as our uh, our resultant periapsis is above um, above board, and bad angles are pain. Eight hundred k point, no chat for an hour. Like I don't get to speak for an hour. Oh, you you have no idea. How much of an introvert me would just be like, yeah, if you get <laughs> turning the mic off, I'm gonna do my own thing. You can scream about it. And I think uh, next launch we try to push that uh, launch periapsis up to 350. For thump, there we go. Do we get check marks? Nope. Periapsis is not above 2638. Periapsis is at 261. Our time to periapsis is 31 minutes, so we have to take a lap. Of course we do. Why would any of it just work? Comms test one probe batteries. We don't care about them. Comms test one probe is battery dead. We don't care. Whiff, 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 whiff. Hold to apogee, please. Bump the apple by a few kilometers also to save this hassle. Yeah, probably should. All right, let's get, let's just, uh, this is going to float on through, and it's probably going to be at about the time we need to be where we're actually going to be pointing. Would you look at that? Box prograde, please. Binary gate point, turn on TTS for all messages. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm not getting banned from Twitch for the lulls. Ding. There it is. Check, check, check. Eccentricity is go. All right, let's get... Uh... Nope, can't give it a little bump. Advanced reference sun. Uh, where... I guess, yeah, we just have to click left, right. It'll figure it out. Execute. Don't you dare screw with those... And then we spin, and then we decouple, and then we're good. <laughs> Guess forward or back will work too. Yeah, it would, because we got four panels. So we just need to hit the force roll button and jettison, and we're good to go. $500,000 turn on TTS. Yeah, I'll get banned for Twitch for $500,000. <laughs> can, Y'all can text to speech whatever the hell you want once that money hits my bank account. Feels cursed using forward and back. It does. It does. Force roll 180. And stage it. Tunk. Yay. Comsat 2 has been deployed. Welcome to active service, Commsburger. Good to see you. Alright, let's change the name here. Not part 
command rename <laughs> give me an ICBM I don't have one to give <laughs> you encountered a terrible thing and post it in your memes channel oh no comms burger has come into maturity the fully adult comms burger Ding, there we go. They'll separate all on their own eventually. It, this is fine. Taking a quick save. Yes, we everyone doesn't support weaponry or warheads. Oh, I, one of the reasons I like it. Don't ask why. <laughs> the song by the urge. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I have to look at the memes channel now. Oh God! <laughs> Never before have I seen such terror. <laughs> I... Whew. Yeah, no, no, thank you. <laughs> if you look at the memes channel, don't do that. Anyone ever? Don't. Never. Never. Ever. Ever. All right, moving on. Let's get comms four up in the air. I, man, we really should be trying for that Molina contract again. I feel like I'm just burning time not doing it. How's our research? Digicom will be done 10-4, 1960. It's 8 August. Mm. A million voices cried out in horror. Silenced. Where's the memes? Yeah, it's in the Discord. Uh, you, if you're not already in the Discord, there should be a link to join it. Somewhere here on the Twitch something or other. Or I think you can type exclamation point Discord. Let me try. Doscord, you dumbass. Yeah, it helps if you spell it correctly, Cosmo, you moron. Boom, there you go. Okay, uh... Hmm, do I want to update the facility? Let me check on something real quick. Did I, I started working on it. I don't think I finished. Let's see how not finished it is. Now, the other reason I don't particularly want to do it is because I want to do Lunar Impactor and Flyby before I have to set off today. But I got, man, I got an hour and 15 minutes left. So chances of that happening, eh. Need something that's done something to the moon, but a little less. Yes, but you need you have to time those ignitions. All right, uh, open. Like I have a, I have this rocket, this BP four W, with the O one hundred five. Can send something to the moon, technically. Uh, yeah, here it is. M fifty M fifty two B. You can get 3,200 dV into orbit with an ignition. Yeah. So your pion is signing off right on Nova. Well, now that you've pointed out that it is a lucky streak, you have completely jinxed it, my friend. <laughs> yeah, so other than think this was very haphazardly slapped together. <laughs> but basically, this is the launcher we're going to be putting into heavy-duty use at some point. It's 300 parts, so it's going to take a billion years to load. Uh, this is what we're doing with the rest of our day. No, it's not. I've already decided I don't want to mess with this now that I've loaded it. <laughs> but yeah, this basically... I, I made some changes to the Twin Gamma 2 stage down here, just adjustments to their placement, and replaced the uh, XLR-11 with an RDO 105 Basically, there's enough Delta-V, these Gammas round out the orbital insertion, and then the 105 takes over, and we'd probably need an adjustment stage up here. This should, should, should be able to do it. Will you do double barrel core? Will I wait what now? Quick save. I can't quick save in the uh, VAB. It's beautiful. <laughs> double barrel boosters, I love it. I, I love doing the double barrel boosters. 
I love that term. I never referred to them as such, but I think I will now. Yeah, each of these technically, like these, nah, these two are one assembly. I hope I made that clear with all the rings and structural parts that cause my frame rate to plummet. So I hope you enjoy that because I certainly do. <laughs> New favorite terminology. <laughs> Thank you, Amber. <laughs> Lunar Impact just needs suicidal grapefruit, and Melenia might need actual commsat. I think the Melenia Orbit does have a commsat requirement, because this was the thing I built for it, and for some reason it's got 85 units of commsat payload on it. So I think that is part of the requirement. Not 100%, but yeah. Um, so that, we're just not going to play with that right now. I should. I should be updating the launch facility for it. I should be building them, but I'm not. Um, all right, uh, Moonshot 2. An upload save button. You want my save file? You can have my save file. <laughs> you may keep it. Ever generous ampersand. Yeah, so here's our moon puncher. Oh, this is the one I added the panels on. Dang it, this is not the one that I actually wanted to open. But here we are. First two stages strapped together. Double barrel, baby! <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Double barrel core. Is this old? Probably not entire real delta. Or maybe a Thor concept? Oh, interesting. Yeah, so... 105 finishes orbit, we've got this, it spins, and then we've got our baby sergeants and finished off with this little guy in the middle. We don't have the tech quite unlocked for it yet, but we should, and of course we'll have to upgrade our launch facilities for it again, and I have tested it. We should be able to pull off lunar flyby, at least in simulations with no failures and everything going well. Lunar flyby and lunar impactor are very possible. And this is a 65, 64 ton, 63 ton rocket. Much, much cheaper. Gluing the first, gluing two first stages together under an existing upper stage stack solution that I've wanted to use for a while. Sort of a semi heavy variant on an existing rocket. Maybe it's the stand fives, the standard heavy config option when there's three stages glued together. Wow. Yeah, it does in fact save a lot of money on dueling. So that's how we're going to punch the moon. Don't save. Uh, I just think that we have to get the the solid motor tech has to be unlocked. So we're kind of just twiddling our thumbs waiting for that to happen. Lucy! Hello! So I guess we're just going to wait for stuff to finish getting built. Because, uh, yeah, we got another month until our next tech node finishes and that's digicom then we upgrade that oh wait no we do have the oh man i totally could have spent some time upgrading the facility dang it we do have the tech unlocked Shit. all right well we're gonna do this because we're here we're two launches away from being able to finish out that comsat thing and close out the program and just be done with it so i think we will carry on with that for the time being I heard that Ulta 4 saves your launch and makes Kerbals invincible. <laughs> Engineers have been complaining about duct tape shortage again. <laughs> Sharp increasing glue budget. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's get this thing off the ground. Launch 3 of 4. Making progress. Your own mod pack for RP1 RSS? Do it. Or, I don't know, contribute to the RSSRO code base too. Move to a new city. New university. Wow. Congratulations, Ampersand. That sounds pretty awesome. I hope it's awesome. It could also suck. I shouldn't assume these things. I hope that's going well for you. <laughs> Alright, let's boost our target parry to 350 since we got plenty of margin on our last flight. And everything seems to be going quite well for us, so I uh, engage autopilot. Let's just uh, get this going. The ignition, right? Yes, good ignition. Why well, I need to isn't so awesome, but it's a great place. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're getting into a pretty good place. 
Can you drone an AC unit that's Bork? Can you can you donate an AC unit that's Bork? Wall AC unit? Let's see, what can I build out of a Bork wall AC unit? I guess if it just had a Freon leak and the compressor's still good, you can make a lot of fun things out of an AC compressor. I don't know, most AC compressors are set up like a... I mean, a four-cylinder, eight-piston, horizontally opposed engine. Or like, I don't know, rotating mass compression assembly and so if you just make uh, I mean it's got inlets and outlets that would be your intake and exhaust so you mix your fuel air in a carburetor probably pipe it into the inlets and then exhaust ports coming out you just need a way of getting spark in there and you can build a pretty robust little engine now it's in a thousand pieces <laughs> that's fairly borked um, <laughs> your favorite things that have come from a broken AC was a dude making an RC pusher fan plane from one. Oh, that sounds awesome. Probably sell the refrigerant to somebody if it didn't leak out. Yeah, I mean, oh man. <laughs> the the price premium on, uh, what was the, the old coolant? R22, something like that, that got banned a while ago? It was either R22 or R134. One of them isn't being used anymore and is banned. There's a lot of people who own older cars that can't be converted up to the new stuff that have to use the old refrigerant. And the price on it is alarming. I'll say it was RDO 105. Yes, that was definitely it. <laughs> I understand what's happening right now. I'm just thinking of fun things I could build out of broken air conditioner parts. I don't I have to have a, a project or a hobby or something dumb to do. It's my off season. <laughs> Need more dumb shit to build. I had to get rid of most of my dumb shit when uh kiddo came around. There just wasn't time for it. And most of it was kinda toxic or dangerous. Yeah, meh. In exchange for punching holes in the ozone layer whenever some dingus decides to let a vent air indeed. Right. But if you happen to have an ounce or two of, well, I want to say R134 also, you're probably looking at like two or three hundred bucks of stuff. No cartwheels? No cartwheels. I forgot to fix the staging. Oh, good. All right, looks we're we're doing all right. Hey, hey. welcome everyone. <laughs> it's because I started talking about air conditioners, isn't it? Yeah, everybody loves an air conditioner. Mm. The old stuff did work better. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the old 134 coolant. I think it... I. All right. <laughs> this is just... I have no actual data. This is my experience. <laughs> I... Oh, man. My, my 300Z and my 89 Pro probably both had R134. They are both long dead before it had to be converted. But I, I never had to recharge the AC systems in either of those, like, ever, until I pulled the AC out. Years and years and years, they worked great. My new Mazda, it's not new, new, my 2016 Mazda. I've had to recharge the AC in that like three times. I'm no longer steal the copper out of your local building site and go around draining coolants on lemons. <laughs> good, good luck. But yeah, that, again, purely anecdotal. I feel like the new stuff leaks out more, but eh, it doesn't chew up the ozone, I guess, so I don't know, not like, oh, who cares? That's money. That stuff is still expensive as hell, and I don't like doing it. So there's that. <laughs> Alright, um, third successful light on the RDO 105. We're way past that part in the news. Uh, margins still looking good. Woohoo for driving cars old enough to drive, <laughs> right? <laughs> I do not have a Patreon. I don't ever intend on having one. <laughs> and woo for driving cars old enough to drink. Also, yes. <laughs> oh, I, I I miss those cars. I I miss my old my ninety nine three series. That was an awesome that was just a fun car. Both work. Both old 
<laughs> All right, margin on com set. Three looking pretty good. Okay, sorry, I had a big sneeze. It's gone now, everything's fine. Most of my brains have remained in my head. First card was a 98 Mazda 3. Uh, like a 323? Three, three. Best card you've ever had. This message about <laughs> Board King. <laughs> oh, I got bad news for you. <laughs> it was like back in the 90s, hatchbacks, baby. Oh, I love I love a good hatchback. Let's say my current Mazda 3 is a hatch, and I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Back in the 90s, uh, Ford had like, what, a 20-something, 20 25% stake in Mazda? So there's a lot of Fords that were using Mazda tech. There's a lot of Mazdas that were using Ford stuff, too. There's a lot of intermingling in there. But let's see, if you had the 323, um, was it the 2 liter or the 1.8 liter? I want to say it was either a 1.8 or a 1.9. And you could find that same engine in Miata and Ford Escort. How could you do this to me? My roasted glasses have fallen. It was always a four. Now it was most if you have three two threes, ninety-nine point nine percent Mazda. You might find some Ford switches or control stuff in there. But really it was the Fords that were benefit from taking the vastly superior Mazda engines, reworking them a little bit and putting them in their own cars. <laughs> There's some study from a tech website that came out recently showing a lot of the new heavily computerized cars are absolutely awful. Oh yes, I saw that. And it's terrifying. Explicitly state they're monitoring your love life and trivial for somebody. Yeah, it's terrifying. And really just like, not cool, bro. <laughs> Why do you need to know this stuff? What if your PC went missing? It sounds like a crime. Just saying. So, Beastie, do you wanna do you wanna know a special treat? Dude, can I can I share with you a very special bit of information that's gonna blow the doors off of this entire save? The name of the engine, the engine designation that was that was in that three two three, I believe. If it was a one point eight liter, was the BP four W. Five-speed manual, 1.8 liter. Nice. Please don't do this, Chris. <laughs> ear reveal. <laughs> yeah, you can see my ear at 100k. Yeah. <laughs> so I, at some point, uh, quick save. Yes. Hi, Captain. Quick save has been quick saved. <laughs> All right. I uh, yes, we're in orbit, right? I've completely forgotten what I where I am, what I'm doing. Um, stage it. Pull us away, please. Uh, create node to circularize. Five hundred three meters per second in fifty six minutes. Perfect. Quick save has been saved. The save is quick. Little do they know the full face reveal. <laughs> We don't talk about Zombie Cosmo. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Uh, execute next node, please. Uh, <laughs> Right. And at some point we'll time warp. Yeah, 503 meters per second, so we did see a distinct amount of savings. Oh, poo. Did anybody 
check to see how much Delta V was left in the 0105 before we jettisoned it. I meant to check on that to see if maybe we can push our orbital insertion uh, periapsis a little bit higher, but um, I did not. So there's that. So we went to a Renaissance weekend. We got to taste some really cool meads. Oh man. Yeah, I'll say the, uh, the Renaissance Fair here is not next weekend, but the weekend after, and I'm very, very much looking forward to that. What if my stream blows up next time? Hmm. Messy. I, Ren Fairs are awesome, and meads? Man, I miss a good mead. <laughs> Highly recommend. Everyone should go to one at least once. Even if it's not your thing, give it a try. It might end up being your thing. Oh, blew up. Like, not exploded, blew up. Eh, you know, I'm going to do the same thing. Me? Fair? Like, my name is Ren. <laughs> the 2021 dry year meet where they had to feed the bees on berry juice instead of flower nectar. Oh, interesting. Oh, because, um... Oh, they had to feed the bees on berry juice instead of flower nectar. I get it. So the the honey that was used to make the mead was coming from berry, like the sugars were from berry juice instead of flower nectar. That does sound very interesting. Short for renaissance, logically. <laughs> renaissance? Renaissance? Interesting. Quite. All right, we can physics warp through this. We're going to have to touch up the orbit just like we have on all the other ones because I don't think Mechjeb actually starts this burn early enough. And that's why we end up pushing our, uh, yeah. Uh, six, three, eight. What do we have to be above? So let me pull out the contract specs real quick. No, that's the one that we're not doing. Yeah, two, six, three, eight. So it's uh, two, six, Three eight nine five five and falling would improve the ambiance. Unfortunately, there were a lot of wrens around. <laughs> Not a lot of. Got it. I've just read that. Okay. Yep. Need a snack. <laughs> Indeed. Holy hell. We took a lot of the stress off of this insertion stage. Very much leads me to believe that if I had just done much better mission planning, we could have had a lot more success on this. But yep, there. Apogee has plummeted. I don't care about that commsat. We have a perspective. 98 meters per second left. 96. This says our vessel mass 0 0.311. We're at, or this says 0 0.304. Discrepancy is still there. Your D and D party get to try and kill a king. Nice. Good luck to you and your D and D party, Amberzan. All right. Uh, yeah, we need to adjust our periapsis, and then we'll be okay. So once again, we have to take a most of a lap. Yeah, three quarters of a lap whilst spinning. Fine, it's so time to clean up this orbit. <laughs> I'm going to clean up all of my stuff in orbit. There's far too many things here that are probably not really doing much of anything. Nope, how long I moved this? I should never have moved that. Minute 27. Let's let it spin. We should be close to uh, prograde. Prograde is the word for which I was searching. Go, just passed it. Aim to prograde, please. F it, fire the engines. Wait for the check mark. Ding, there it is. Hey, hold on, wait a minute. It's only three? I thought we had to have four. Huh? I mean, not that I'm complaining or anything. Sun, uh, right, execute. What the? Yeah, four satellites. One, two, 
Okay, vessel not this vessel, not number two, not number one. Oh, don't. I'm very confused as to the state of this contract. I know we we have to launch another one because it says four. We built four, we're gonna fly four. 100% gonna, I don't know, be legitimate about it, I guess. <laughs> I'm very confused right now. All right, and we'll hit force roll, get some spin on our comms burger. Back for 10 seconds. Countdown initiated. Stage it. Patunk. All right, comsat four is deployed. Let's get the name change in effect here. Rename vessel. Number three, don't double tap your anything, really. Ding, ding, ding. Yep, we got to do one more. Okay. Network testing up for two days. Sure. Build five, fly five. 0105 will cause a strike right when you need it to work. Fair. 105 was flawless through the whole early game. Your first lunar orbiter, though, fail. Yep. <laughs> That's how it always is. Just bides its time, waiting to run at the very worst moment. Every single time, without fail, it will fail when you least want it to fail. Okay, one more ComSat launch to go. I guess we can. I don't know. Are they? Yeah, they're st they're still building it, but. Uh, after the launch pad is done reconditioning, we can update it. That'll take a couple of days to get the lunar punchers ready. So let's go get, well, let's warp to complete on this, warp to complete on this. Ding, fantastic. What if you always want it to fail? Hmm. That's a glitch in the matrix. You just have to want it to fail. Your tooling diameters, I bet you could do a drop tank RDO 105 stage pretty easy. Ooh. You're probably correct, sir. I have a lot of diameters tooled. If you always want a rocket that fails, use the HA-1037. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Long burn time. It will benefit. Yeah, indeed. Like the, the 0105 is absolute. Like, yeah, that would benefit greatly from using a drop tech. Got a drop tank. Uh, BP4W moonshot. Man, why does that one only have 60? Because I think that was an earlier design. Do I have one that doesn't have a space in it and that's where I messed up? Or did I just copy over the wrong one from my build save? So yeah, it still would have had the BP4W designation because it's flying on a BP4W. Na 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 na. Yep. All right, we're just gonna have to do that. Load, here we go. Just got ordered first try with it. <laughs> with the AJ-1037. And no revert rules, but having five fails in a row on an AJ-10 really makes you sway a little. Yeah, that, that engine will test you. Namely, your patience every single time. All right, moonshot. I just wanna take a couple of quick tests here. Do I really want that? Probably because again, these del these two Delta V readouts, not accurate. But if I am gonna put this into production, I'm gonna snuggle this little guy up. We're gonna make it look somewhat like it should. Are those thrusters gonna clip through on staging? It looks like probably. Dang it. It's a fun kickstage assembly. I love doing dumbass shit like this. <laughs> okay, good. That thrust limiter is thrust limited. I love eating three day old poteen. <laughs> you do you, boo boo. I'm not here to judge. I think. Ah, oh, man. Is this the one where I tried to up the batteries to deal with it? I'm pretty sure it is. Let's see, that's 34. 
35, that's about spec margin. Uh, I'm just gonna ruin everything. White quick, just to make sure that everything sucks as bad as I think it did. The one I ran in testing did not have the solar panels oriented like that. It had full scope panels like this just to help the dumb thing survive all the way to the moon. <laughs> that was sarcasm. Hmm, was it? Was it really? Yeah, 42 dB. That we're going to have to test for because I'm, I'm pretty sure I had it set to 30, maybe 41. We'll give this a test flight before we start building them, but let's finish out our CompSat stuff. Save. Oh yeah, we're going to upgrade because we're not going to change any fueling. Commonality, 100%. Sweet. Yeah, because we're basically just... Do I have to upgrade this? Tool all. 14,000. Sure, purchase all toolings. Good enough. There's like, shbeep. Mm, yeah, and I mean... <clears throat> Because the only thing we really changed was the addition of solids and not using the, um, whatchamahoozits, the HTP. So we don't actually have to upgrade our launch facility. That's pretty cool. We can just fly this dumb thing. The other day you figured out that with a science core on top of a baby sergeant stack on top of an Antares motor, you can fit a direct Saturn shot into one and a half tons. Holy hell! It'd be worth anything without a dish or antenna, but hey, you could boop Saturn for next <laughs> the cost of next to nothing. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I guess we'll just throw one on the build list. Uh, yeah, we have to unlock three parts, spending 19,000, unlock credit, sure. The Baby Sergeant, the Communitron, the other thing. Okay, our first moon shotter is uh, being built. We're going to do the ComSat launch first. Man, they're just cranking out these M52s. I feel kind of bad about this. <laughs> like, legit, I probably should, because most of these are just going to get scrapped or reconfigured to some extent. I really want to fly that comms. That... Oh, we have uh, research that's about to be complete. Yay, Digicoms! We'll be done in a minute. <laughs> Toby, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome. All right. Um, yes, and we would like to spend 50 grand upgrading it. It will be done 14 December. That's not that long from now. Sweet. Oh, but we're going to bleed money for a little while. That's That sucks. How's our research? Yep. That'll be done January-ish. Uh, we might have to lay off some engineers for a little while. <laughs> Now uh, we can scrap this Modelo, but now nah, if we need science, that would be a great way to get some. Uh, this warp to complete, and eh, we're only going to go down 1,200. Let's just let's burn through it just as quick as we can. Just tell, just sell the compsats to somebody else. Use the boosters for something later. And yep, there you go. Ding! All right, roll it out. Now, how much are we bleeding? Okay. Uh, warp to complete, a loss of 2740, yeah, we'll be okay. We'll be okay, we'll be okay. Ding, there we go. Uh, let's get this done, shall we? You want science quick? Make devs cry by slapping orbital perturbations on every single craft! <laughs> 220 science in half a year. God, yeah, I should have done that. I didn't think I had the margins on this uh, comms burger that we did. Otherwise, yeah, I think it had been there and it had been transmitting and we'd have... No, the inclination's not right. Those have to be in polar orbits. All right on, Toby. Thank you so much for the raid. Go get some sleep. Sleep is entirely underrated. Enjoy it whilst you can. Or just higher orbits. Oh, well, they do. Can you put them in a high space orbit and they don't have to have an inclination requirement? 
65 or something. Okay. Very interesting. All right. Um, maybe we kick this up to 360 just to, you know, hey, push, push the envelope a smidge. Engage autopilot. Nope. Disengage autopilot. Let's fix our staging before we have any other dumb mistakes. Engage autopilot and ignition. There we go. This doesn't. I was like, what was the clear testing period on this? Um, not you. Yes, you. Two days. So, in theory, testing time after network up two days. In theory, two days from now, we can clear out this, uh, which is good, because I think this program expires at the end of December or sometime in January, maybe. So, uh, we're kind of on the wire for it. Making a small pizza from Costco. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I was reminded of the pizza, like, by the slice that you buy at Costco. And, like, man, it's good. But we also buy, like, frozen pizzas from there. Like, uh, I don't know, the three cheese or whatever. The kiddo helps me put on, like, pepperoni and even more cheese. It's a fun Friday night activity for us. Might help with survival too if spin stabilization goes wrong. You can leave the set for two days too. Counts down on the background on the KSC screen. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and if we're not well it does do battery drain in the background. But battery should be fine. No cartwheels. Pow. We are good to go. Sweet. Yeah, margin still exists. Oh man. It always worries me when it does attitude changes under physical Time warp. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like we'll uh we'll still have something in the tanks here when the O one oh five finishes its job. I'm glad we could dial this in just in time to figure out the very last satellite launch. <laughs> what a good LV. Behaving so well now thanks to all the periapsis. <laughs> Nova the Savior. Freaking hot. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it real hot? It's real hot. Alright. Man, I cannot wait to clear out this program. It was way more interesting to finish than I thought it would be, but again, it turns out it was just bad flight planning. <laughs> Not actual... Uh, limitations in the vessel. If we get this done and we get this cleared, we're going to start testing our moon puncher and see how well that goes for us. I think uh, the thing I will work on over the course of the week is playing Starfield and ignoring my 350 ton launcher for yet another weekend. <laughs> the serious upgrades to that thing are available. <coughs> Flight planning is really the challenge of the first early orbital period indeed. Like you can do a lot more with a lot less if you just know how to fly. Which is unfortunately a skill that I've never picked up on. <laughs> we just took uh oh we I, I can pull this off by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Oh wait, hey I can change this thing. Oh wait, now it's kind of easy. And I can just ramble incessantly through most of the launch. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right, how are we looking here on our... I should have upped our insertion periapsis so we don't have to keep touching it up. That would have been a smart thing to do. Yeah, maybe I'll just... Uh, I'll give it a little bump from the, uh, the engine once we finish our orbital insertion. There's the what? The RD215 that gets you a crap ton of thrust for cheap? It does? I don't think I've ever actually used that engine. Hey, orbital insertion complete. Man, we're even over our target area. Uh, RCS to arm, stage it, pull us away, point to prograde, please. Let's give this a quick nudge or two. 
We need to explore the other Soviet gas generator engines. I should probably do that, shouldn't I? <laughs> Two six three eight two six four two six five two six six. I think I'll probably try to do this one manually, um, in hopes that we can. I don't know. Start the burn early enough to make a difference. You no, know, one of LPG's weird campaigns used the two and five, whichever it is, for a solid majority of missions. Interesting. Hey, Don, how's it going? Like not mixing American and Russian engines until the 90s. Oh, I think it adds to the difficulty. I think if you require yourself to use a American engine for every Russian engine you use, it makes it a lot harder to do. If HSP, I think it was the R7 monstrosity, but 215s instead of the 108-107. Wow. All right, I'm going to have to look into that. What's our burn time? Six minutes? All right. Let's just get there. Let's get this done. Five, four, three. Bring it out. It's also kind of better not to mix the two since the national engine series share costs, indeed. Which is why forcing yourself to share them increases difficulty. It's, awesome. it's also how I justify 500,000 starting fundage. I'm going to spend it all on tooling and engines in the first five years of the space program. <laughs> For Soviet boosters with Hydrolox upper stages is just a big meme. It's the most effective way to do anything in the game ever. And 215 had air light. <laughs> so if you make an, an R7 with an RL10 upper, like it, you, you have, you can win KSP with that one vehicle for the rest of the game. And 270M being the highest ISP upper stage option of its era. Yep. It's you know just the greatest weighted upper stage, right? <laughs> Forgot the air quotes there, Cosmo. But yeah, exactly. Really hoping to do a full space plane series. Nice. Procedural HL10 likely through a ton of temperature changes. Interesting. Why do we play KSB? Because we can. And ironic, the reason the Soviets had such an early lead in the space race because their tech was worse on nuclear bombs. Because <laughs> they were they were heavier, so they had to haul a lot more. Yep. <laughs> like the F dude. Why? <laughs> M2F1 lifting body. Ooh. The RDD27M never existed, so it's only fair it takes infinity time to integrate. <laughs> Sounds accurate enough to me. Yep. What's the chance I get a week off? Like... From my day job? None. I have no vacation time left. What's the chance that I skip a week streaming? Uh, you know, it probably won't be for a couple of weeks, but I do occasionally. Actually, just not a thing. <laughs> All right, I gotta get ready to shut this down since I'm flying by hand for the first time in about a gazillion years. Two... Tink. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, yeah, because you were told to hold to the node and your periapsis is not above 2638. We are at 2642, so if you just go back to prograde, please, and thank you. People misread the old Soviet documents. Interesting. Probably a smaller engine sharing the name, but they're not actually making that smaller engine because shoving it in the 270 is easier. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute meme, the memes, which happen to be named the RD270. Interesting. Okay, just light the dang engine then. Are we increasing? 
our yeah what's going on here two six three four oh two we've kicked our eccentricity out of spec uh, so we just hit circularize the next apogee create node 15 meters per second in one hour and 25 minutes okay um, let's turn this off how much delta view we have left 80 meters per second yeah which is not actually 80 meters per second but here you go Von Braun and Korolev really wanted to make big rockets to put stuff in orbit. Their financial backing was military. So Korolev was allowed to make a bigger ICBM than Von Braun because Soviet bombs needed it, which put him further ahead towards making an orbit later. Interesting. Yeah. Makes sense. Is that our battery going out? No. I mean, kind of. If we hold our node, we will not be facing the sun. So we're going to take this pass, just letting the panels skip on through. Not much chance that uh, they'll keep the batteries charged. Yeah, we're going to... Oh, God! I Stupid. You stupid, stupid, stupid. Cannot... <sighs> Remove all nodes. Create node. Execute next node. Shit. Are we going to make it another hour and 38 minutes on the battery that we have? And I think that's not actually a thing. Did Von Braun ever actually build an ICBM? Hmm. I, yeah, top two stages to be used its own rocket first. I'll bomb the ICBM. Oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. Kerbal's flu and having no break. It's our human space program. Kerbal's very favorite game to stream. <laughs> Atlas wasn't a Huntsville program. Hmm. Okay. Are we going to survive long enough to do this, or should I see if we just have comms at periapsis? We don't, we kind of do, but whatever we do right now, can we go? Nope, that's the wrong way. All right, yeah, getting our eccentricity down. Let's look for the check marks above 2638. Two. Mm. Two six three four two six three. This is very inefficient, but it's working. We are reducing our apogee and raising our. Well, we were raising our perigee. Now we're not so much. Okay. Uh, remove all nodes. Create node. Fifty three minutes. Gosh, I hope we make it. All right. Proton was also sort of justified by the Politburo as a super heavy missile. Hmm. What if I got a new PC? <laughs> I just need a new graphics card for real. Hang over the node. At some point, I'm going to have to stop dicking around because watch me screw up this entire ComSat program just because I decided to fly manually for a change. Let's not be dumb, Cosmo. Don't be dumb. Get to the node. We are not going to have the battery to make it. We're at 264. Hold hold the phone here. Hold hold on. Hold on. We're at 2648. We need to be above 2638. So if I just aim to retro and I hit the back button. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remove all nodes. Come on now. If you got 100 KSP2 stream keys, I would gladly give those to other people. If you land this job at Best Buy... <laughs> mm. Man, they do have a really great employee discount. I worked at a Best Buy for uh, quite a few years way back in the day. Good luck to you, Lucy. And no, don't promise people your employee discount. That's They fire you for that. I don't have comms, so all I can do is... Nope go the wrong way. So, go to Prograde. Fuck. Quit fucking around, Cosmo. Maybe you should take a look at the map view and actually figure this out. But, you don't have enough battery. You have to get this thing deployed. Uh, now to now-ish. I didn't promise. Fair enough. <laughs> Couldn't figure out how they would have done their original UR-500. Made a UR-200 rocket. Removed the second stage and clustered five together. No matter what upper stage is shoved in that monstrosity, never come up with a reasonable payload. It's interesting. 
paid a thousand an hour to what? <laughs> Stream KSP2? Oh yeah, gladly. <laughs> no one will watch because the frame rate's garbage because my 1060 can't handle it, but yeah, it's you know neither here nor there. All right, yeah, I got a half an hour left of this stream, and I really just want to fly one test flight. Just one test flight of that moon booper. That should put... No, eccentricity is wrong. Of course, eccentricity is wrong. Why else wouldn't it be wrong? Uh, we... Circularize. No, stupid. Don't pick the dumb thing. Uh, at an altitude of uh, 2651 kilometers, because that's right where we are now. Create node. 22.5 meters per second. No, not in an hour. Do it now. I guess uh, hour 52 is about our orbital period, yeah? Uh, orbital speed, up, uh, orbital period is 2 hours, 23 minutes, so that's half an orbit away. Fuck, we're not going to make it 2 hours, bro. <laughs> Shit. Mm, we're climbing, we're climbing. Uh, remove all nodes, create node, circularize after a fixed time, 0 seconds. Oh, hey, that node's in 26 seconds. Let's just hit execute next node. That'll work. Why would eccentricity ever be what it's supposed to be? That's silly. I know. Hilarious. Hey, you? Oh, you want to say hi? <laughs> ah, the little one has joined us. You want to play some space game with me? Yeah? Mm -hmm. How was Grandma and Grandpa's house? Oh, are you tired? No, can't be tired. You're never tired, are you? We brought home cake. <laughs> you, you brought home what? Cake. What, what kind of cake? Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. Oh, Y'all, I'm real sorry. There's chocolate cake at stake here. Noden plus 40 seconds. Good job, Mecky Jab. Take your time. Orient whenever you feel like it. That's fine with me. All right. Ding. You know what? You can just uh, abort node execution. We need to save some of this fuel. Uh, remove all nodes. Inertial sun. Right. Execute. Yay. Ah, a higher priority. Yeah, priority indeed. I hope that didn't. Yep. Performing shakeout testing. One day, 23 hours. Yay. I like chocolate cake. Also me, red velvet, dude, right? <laughs> it has that white stuff in the, in the middle. Oh, yeah? Frosting? Ice cream. You gotta be specific here, kiddo. You have to be specific. <laughs> you have to be what? I'm Papa. You don't need to see what You're right, I didn't hear what you just said. Force roll. We got spin and ejection. Yay! Shakeout testing is commencing. Let's take a quick save. We're done here. You get the chance. You take a look at the tankage toolings? Sure. Uh, back to the Space Center. If you're paid a thousand an hour, Cosmonaut, to what? Stream KSP2? Thousand dollars an hour cash? Yeah. In a heartbeat. But like I said, no one will watch because my frame rate will be terrible. <laughs> Because my poor old 1060 just can't handle it. <laughs> what are you giggling at so much? What is so funny? Besides that you got the hiccup ups. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, can we look at our tooling from here? Yeah, tooling. What did you want to see, Ampersand? Velvet sodium, sweet. I like, man, yeah. I like, I like German chocolate cake, but not for the cake itself, but for like that. The, I don't know the topping they put on it. 
Uh, not stringers, but probably aluminum stringer. Because we're considering this for whatever tankage you're using on your launchers. Mm, balloon? <laughs> I think the O105 stage has a balloon tank in the middle and an aluminum stringer as the outside. All right, velvet and cookie cake you go to. Nice. Cream cheese icing. Oh, God, I love cream cheese icing. I have sense about the drop tank pill you. Yeah, buddy. I made a viewer give me a copy of Starfield, but my GTX 970. Big enough drive being spinny. You can tell them to see if you can get the money back. Probably can't run it. Fair. <laughs> that I think that would be the uh I don't know, the the better the, the honest thing to do. Rip it in the tube. Alright, and I let me look at the aluminum stringers. We got a lot here, but three five by three threes tooled. Wow, yeah, that's for the big boy launcher. But I think um yeah, for the 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 big boy launcher, the 350 ton, the the 105 exists inside that cargo fairing. So I think the maximum obtainable diameter that can be used in there is 2.5 meter. So I think this 2.2 meter diameter is probably the sweet spot. Good aluminum tank as well. Okay. Oh, not training, dummy. Tooling. Um, and that is. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, you want to look at the high pressure, right? I guess it doesn't matter. The pressures, the tooling. No, the tooling's not the same. And I've only done these in very small sizes. So, uh, aluminum stringer tank. Is that what I looked at? No. Wait. Hold on a second. Gridded aluminum. Do I have those stringer? Yeah, aluminum gridded. That's what we were looking at, right? Just making sure. Wax at different different pressures. I think so. Makes sense. Also, moderately scary, kind of. As long as it'll fit, don't worry about tooling it. I I have to spend a lot of money on tooling to make it up to. Make it up to simav. Yeah, tooling is per type. Indeed, indeed. Okay. Um, let's go. Edit Moonshot 2. We're going to do a quick sim. I got uh, a little less than 20 minutes, a little more than 20 minutes. You ping me? No. Uh, I think 2.5. With a 3.5 meter fairing, I think you can go out to two and a half meters diameter on the payload. I could be wrong, but I'm not sure. Simulate. Simulate. Let's run this. A little cramp for a 105 drop tank, so 3.5 diameter would be pretty easy. Go for the 3.5 then. It'll just be uh, integrated. Go for the 3.5. I don't mind it. Let's stretch that up. Lifting body. Sweet. Let's have a look-see. <laughs> oh, I see pictures of that little guy. <laughs> Do it. All right. One quick sim, and then I got to wrap it up. All right. So then... Uh, do, 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 moon set as target. Let's adjust these before we hurt ourselves. We don't need attach altitude. We don't need a stop at stage. We do need to launch into plane of target. We need to fix our fairings. Engage autopilot. And away we go. This should be a very short stage, though. <laughs> With a 3.5 meter diameter, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Embiggen into fairings! Hooray! 
Like I'm about, I have to make a bunch of changes to that 350 tonner. So if the if the RDO 105 doesn't have to exist inside the fairing, but instead carries its own fairing, cool, no big deal. It actually probably look a lot less awkward <laughs> because of the uh, the gamma stage that sits underneath it is very squat. <laughs> Oh, we might get some cartwheels on this because of our target orbit is quite low. This will be interesting and hopefully uh, successful. Although I think our total payload is less than what we were just using for Commsburger. So hopefully, even if we do somersault, we can still make it to orbit anyway. Anything to carry a 3-5 meter fairing base would be fairly painful. Could it fall off with the first drop tank? Okay, I see what you mean. And yeah, that does... That's why the 105 stage never carries the fairing base, because it's just heavier. Fuck. What if the fairing base fell off with the first drop tank section? Wide fairings are valid, though. Indeed, indeed. And I don't know. I look forward to seeing it, though. Uh, fairing bases aren't hollow. Oh, that'd be rad, that dude, wouldn't it? They're not. I swore that they are. I clip through them all the damn time. Anyway, I probably need to concentrate on stuff. This is gonna take some some level of finesse. No cartwheels, no cartwheels. Yes, no cartwheels. Looking good. Back to Fizz Warp, here we go. Drop screenshots in the craft file and Discord, you got something you're happy with. Awesome, dude. I can't wait to see it. Hey, 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 what is going on here? Why the deviation, friend? It's not like you got margin to play with here, buddy boy. Make sure you stop at stage four so you don't go firing my SRBs without prior authorization. I'm going to overbuild your first fairings and just use that insanely expensive one for the entire game. <laughs> you know, hey, again, if it works, sometimes putting challenges in place is just, I don't know, makes things much more interesting. Use it for longer stages, just adding non-decoupling in her stage. Oh, what tech avionics are we running? Um, early? check. Mm. I don't know, like it takes this to do a 0.74 ton avionics unit. I want to say it's early. Uh, I think like the third rank down. If you don't have deep space yet, it's probably early. Yeah, I do not have deep space yet. That's the next note up. So. But soon, soon, soon. We got a general. You see, it's in Blender. Wait, what? Oh, so I can't show what I can do in Blender. Ah, man. Blender is an impressive software. I have no idea how to use Man, that looks like it's on fire. <laughs> you know, we're catching that nice... Uh, Daylight rise, uh, sunrise, morning. Don't have, yeah, okay. Doop doop. Made most of a Trek Skelly in it. What is a Trek Skelly? Mm, daylight rise, my favorite. <laughs> I deserved that. Alright, yeah, looks like we're going to have plenty of margin on orbital insertion. That's good. Can we speed this up just a smidgen? That's what we mentioned. Just a healthy amount of offset on the primary fairing. and Oh, it's, it is cheap. Interesting. I prefer Night Dawn. Don't, yeah, that's fair. Night Dawn is the much more popular 
Uh, I lost it. I'm go I. Revving animation. Hmm. Don't mind the drip paint job. In okay. Night and Dawn is a shitty punk band name. <laughs> It'll go kind of like pop metal, sounds like a Night Dawn kind of band name. Alright. Coming up on orbital insertion, and there's engine cutoff. Kaboo. Thank you, RCS to arms, stage it out. Pull us away, please. Uh, home and transfer to target. Intercept only, no capture, create node. 14 minutes, perfect. Angle to node, please. <laughs> it's actually just crash this drummer name. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, I have a deficiency of rhythm. And it's not that I have no rhythm, I have negative rhythm. A band called the Nouns. An alt band called Nouns. Hmm. That sounds very interesting. All right. Uh, RCS is really just there to get us angled in. It has a talent all of its own. Yeah, definitely. Go for it. All right. Are we stable? I think we're stable. What's our total burn time here? 28, 29 seconds, about 30 seconds. Give or take-ish. And we're gonna, we're gonna, why did you do physics work, you moron? Come on. Ah, it sings songs one note off. It, you know, probably uh, three bars behind is where I will be. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 46 seconds to go. That's what we do. We make sure you're still targeted to the node. You are. We turn this, well, we just turn RCS off. And we wait. All right. Uh, here we go in 3, 2, 1. Spin it up. And ignition. And ignition again. <laughs> and let's see if we actually overshoot. I don't think we will, but we've got about 150 meters per second of RCS propellant on board. Come on, moon. Whee! Truth is, you know better. It's trying hard enough. I don't think it's better. You won't quit trying because you know better, right? Oh, did we overshoot our shot? We overshot our shot by wow. These margins were a whole lot worse uh, elsewhere. Stage it. Bring up the core. Command. Uh, control point forward. Reversed. RCS to arm, tag the throttle. Now we'll give it a minute or two to let that get out of the way. Tag the throttle. We only got to bleed off 50 meters per second. That's pretty cool. I think we still have that. Let's see what we can pull off here. Adjustments, adjustments, adjustments. Lower that, uh, focus view. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, sweet peas. Mmm. That's an impactor. I didn't want to actually impact, but very doable. And on a very quick, uh, very quick test run. How are we looking on power consumption? Looking stable. Excellent. I'll take that, man. Hell yeah. Watch what happens when we... I don't know. Since we don't have our Digicoms upgraded yet, I'm willing to bet that by the time we get out to... I don't know, anywhere... That we will lose comms. Oh, now we're drain power. Interesting. Oh, it's because our science experiments kicked on. That's good. Good, good, good. Yeah, we've got... 
pressure scan, temp scan, mass spec, and the digital imaging. So mass spec takes a while, but can we get through it before our batteries die? Yes, yes we can, and then batteries fully recharge. Excellent, and then again, nothing there. Uh, do we still have comms? No, no we do not. Hopefully Digicom will fix that. Fly by and impact me at the same time. The cheese. They can. But if you do a if you do a quick flyby, you have way more time to radio in the science. So I think the payout is actually better. Because yeah, most of these won't work at high altitude. So you just kinda kinda wait. Flyby, impact, orbit, and comms can be done all at once. Interesting. Please describe your at feel that. Alright, but we can get good orientation. Orientation with the sun is going to depend on when we launch. And yeah, after that we really can't do much. I just want to see how much, well we won't be able to see how much gets radioed in because we don't have comms because we haven't invested in our digicom yet. But, I'm going to call this a win and I'm also going to call this a night. So, alright y'all, um, I don't know if I'm actually rolled it credits. I'm, I'm pretty much out of time. You know, kiddos here and I gotta go eat cake. So yeah, launch right after the orbit or not. Uh, I But I need the sciencey things like right meow. So all right y'all, uh, I'm gonna see who's here that we can raid. Uh, Malky is playing space engineers. Let's go hang out with him for a bit, shall we? I know it's not KSP, but I'm also in a rush. I'm gonna go eat cake. That's I will enjoy the cake. Thank you, Beastie. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> meow is not the time for jokes. <laughs> What's going on, Meow? Am I saying Meow? <laughs> yes, you definitely should get your RP1 not borked. And soon. You're missing all the fun. All right, y'all. Thank you so, so much for hanging out. I really, really appreciate it. Today was awesome. We got stuff done. And I'm very happy about it, so... Right. <laughs> That's going to do it for me. Thank you so, so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. And I, I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.